Welcome to the Kicking Up Dust Media podcast, guys. Um, we've got a guest on by the name of Ghost. He's a different ghost because you know we've had one already. Yeah, yeah, I've seen that yeah, one. That's a, that's a different <laughs> yeah. ghost, you know. So this is, this is another ghost from Newham, East London. Um, got a, a deep story to tell. I've heard parts of it myself already. So inshallah, we're going to get into it. So let me start from the beginning. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa Tell us, I want to know about your your story. Obviously, Islam played a big part from what I heard yeah. or whatever. But I want to start from the beginning, where you come from, where you grew up, you know, where your parents come from, right. and stuff like that. <clears throat> All right. Um, so, um, um, I was born in Uganda. I was born in Uganda. I came here at the age of seven. Um, by here, I'm talking. Um, I, I, I'm talking about Newham, Canning Town. Um, <clears throat> I went to primary school in Canning Town, uh, secondary school in Canning Town, and yeah, uh, my parents, both Ugandan, of course, um, they were just normal people worked a regular nine to five, really working like most immigrants that came yeah, from yeah, South yeah. Asia. Um, <clears throat> Uh, primary school and stuff like, how were you like behaved and stuff like that? Were you like well behaved? Or? Uh, it was a change. Primary school, it's, um, especially just relocating to a new country, so it's, it's like a different, I want to say culture, because, you know. How old were you when you came? Seven. Oh, you were seven? Yeah, came, seven. Right? So I've still got memories of myself, like, you know, as a kid growing up in Africa and stuff okay. like that. Um, was there like bullying or anything at that age when you like come over? Nah, you know, I never really, I never, it's, it's, it's not something I picked up on. And to be honest with you, from like, when I went to school in Africa and stuff like that, <clears throat> um, I've I've always I've always been like a you know like a People. strong kid, okay. yeah, like a strong-minded kid and oh. stuff like that. So that, that that type of stuff wouldn't really well, affect you and stuff yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. And so obviously we've gone to Canning Town and stuff. Obviously, probably not the best of neighborhoods and stuff like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. So how was your behavior at primary school moving on to secondary school? Because <clears throat> usually that's the ages where kind of like you know that transition there. Mm. Is where you see where, where kind of kids kind of move into. Um, in primary school, I was just trying to. It's like you try, you, see, you see when you relocate, you're trying to find yourself type of thing, mm. where you fit in. Do you know what I mean? Especially coming from Africa and that different uh, culture, different you know environment. You know, now I've come here. You know, everything's much softer here. You know, <clears throat> when I went to school in Africa, did you beat you right? Yeah, 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 hundred percent, hundred percent. You hold licks. And licks yeah. You know, um, the teacher will discipline you like he's your dad. Do you know what I mean? So um, this is this was like moist, basically. Yeah, the no, hundred. This was um, this was uh, you know, you would find that there is no, you know, discipline, discipline. applied. You know, because like, here you see kids talking back to the teachers. Exactly. Back home, you won't see that. Exactly. Uh, if I was to tell you a little story that I remember, yeah, back home, uh, you know, especially going to school back home, they used to have assemblies, yeah, and in these assemblies, yeah, they'll they'll make everyone line up. And it's like an army little thing, yeah. and um, they'll call out people's grades. Right. Hot man up. Yeah, hot man up. Call out people's grades, and also not just that. As well. It's funny enough. I was having this conversation with someone the other day. They all uh, they had a like a boarding school type of thing, okay. right? So some people stay on school on camp campus or whatever, right? And the rest of the people that can't afford boarding school go home. So those that stay on boarding school. If you piss the bed, right, they would make you hold the bed, the, your mattress, mattress, yeah, in assembly. At that age? At that age. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I, and, and the school that I went to, it's like, you know, you'd have people from ranging from the age of seven all the way to like 15 or whatever. So imagine being a 15 year old, that's like, they weed the bed and one of the boarding school teachers will find out that you pee the bed or whatever. Right, they'll make you stand in assembly with your mattress or or a sheet or whatever, mm, right? Standing. And they'll call you out in front of everyone, so it's like hot in, yeah. They'll make you uh, lay down or get the stick, do you know what I'm saying? And start disciplining you for peeing in a bed, do you know what I'm saying? So if you had that treatment here, you need therapy after 100%. That, 100%. I remember one time there was, a, there was a brutal teacher that we had in primary school. He's uh, called a kid out in, in class, yeah, and he said to him, Come out the front of the class. Kids come out to the front of the class, and he told his kid get in a press up position. Right, this is all torture matter, matter like tactics. The kids got in the press up position, and he drew a circle of a chalk that he had, and he said, "You're not gonna move from there until all your sweat fills up that circle." 
So you have to hold yourself into that position. Every time you drop down, you know, you're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna you basically lash you with a with stick that I've got. So you can imagine this, the whole time he's teaching, this kid sat like literally he's in the press up position in front of the class, yeah. He's, you can see his body trembling, trembling. he's trying but to he step go down. He doesn't want to go down because every time he does go down, he holds a lash. Do you know what I'm yeah. saying? But the only way he'll be able to move from there is if his sweat falls up the whole circle. So these are, as a kid seeing this stuff, yeah, yeah. you know what I'm saying? It kind of penetrates the, the mind. Right? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like you said, it, it works both ways. Though. Yeah, yeah. It can, it can make you stronger yeah. or it can make you kind of break yeah, it. Exactly. So it's one or the other, man. It's deep. So moving on to like secondary school and stuff like that. When like obviously they're the ages where your behavior starts to change. And most people, yeah. eleven to fourteen, fifteen. Yeah. So how were you at secondary school, and when did, it, did you go like your life take a turn basically? So secondary school, uh, puberty, you know, you know, like puberty, you know, um, you got a you know a hell of testosterone. Uh, there's girls involved, especially if you go to a mixed mixed school. Because I went to a mixed school, so there's um, you know, there's um, girls involved, you know. You, you know, um, there's other boys, so you, it's like a, a thing where you try to, you know, gain approval or try to be the top guy or try to show off or whatever. Do you know what I mean? And <clears throat> if you're not, if your parents end on it, that like education wise or you know, yeah. you know, They're depending not on what's going on, yeah. exactly. Um, it's not going to end well. And obviously, in school, you're bigger. You know, from year seven to year eleven, you're going to find something in year eleven that smoke weed or do whatever to do. Um, so, you know, if you're, if they see that, you know, you're straight, you know, or you're not fitting in with people, you're, you're likely to get groomed at that age. But for me, to be honest with you, secondary school, I just messed around in secondary school because uh, I, I got all this freedom that I wasn't used to having back home, back home and, you, you know, you don't know what to do with that. Were your parents both working at the time? Yeah, my parents both worked. So obviously you had a lot of idle time to do whatever you kind of wanted. Yeah, yeah. So and not just that as well. In the area, there was always a group of boys. There was some. There was a group of boys that you know, you know, after school, you know, they'll hang around after school and they're like the cool kids growing up. Do you know what I mean? So, and, then, and thinking about it now, they don't really do nothing with their lives, but because they're older and they smoked weed and they've got cool. girls, so you're like, raw, like you know, it'll be like them. Yeah, them guys are kind of cool, you know. Yeah. And also, and when when obviously you were going through this period, did your mum and dad clock on like, yo, he's kind of like messing up right now? Um. Yeah, 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 because I started uh, <laughs> in school, you know. And see, the thing is with me, I never got my first phone until I was like, I don't know, like 14 or something. How old are you like. now? No, I'm 33. Oh, 33 so okay. I didn't get my first phone until I was like in year eight, eight or year, eight, year nine? I don't know. But I know I robbed the phone from school. <laughs> I robbed the kid's phone in school, right? So I came up with this idea because I wanted a phone so bad. Um, I wanted a phone so bad, so I came up with this idea. That me and a couple of boys, we're gonna get some boys' phone. Yeah, we're gonna ask to use it. And we're gonna pass it around. Actually, it's lost me. So. Yeah, pass it, pass. Yeah. So uh, that was the first. That I wouldn't say that was the first bit of trouble because I was always fighting in school and that as well. But what, what, why were you fighting? Just trying to. It's it's. It, look, even in school, I, I couldn't tell you what I wanted to be. Do you know what I'm saying? Even trying in school, to press the chicks and all that. Yeah. Press the chicks, just trying to be a lad's lad. Do you know what I mean? But the reality is, you know, it's like it attention, isn't it? Sort of. Yeah, thing. yeah. It was definitely an attention yeah, thing. Weird, it yeah. wasn't a. It, it, there was no productivity out of it. Do you know what I mean? You know, it's kind of like I don't know. Sometimes when you don't have that attention from home. You look for it from other places. And yeah. Like, maybe it's kind of something like that. When you when I was at that age, you kind of wanted to stand out, sort <clears> of like. But I think it's like waiting until puberty. You know the testosterone and all that as well. Like you, like he said, you want to be the man. Isn't yeah, it's like it's, like, it's, guy, it's, it's a natural yeah, man thing, yeah, isn't it? You yeah. know, like you're trying to. Yeah, yeah. The king of, did, in the jungle. How did you do like GCSEs and stuff like that? Man, I didn't. Do, I didn't complete my GCSEs. Yeah, what was I? Uh, yeah, yeah. I got kicked out of school, man. What age? Year ten. I got caught selling drugs in school. So basically, look, hanging outside school, you know, I started. I picked up a habit because I I had one bad friend in school. Yeah. Um, yeah, I don't know how I got into smoking weed. Um, actually, do you know what? I remember I found some weed in a bus as a kid, right? And I went back because I've seen the cool kids do it. <laughs> I went back and I just rolled it up in some that uh, Rizzler type of thing, yeah. And I uh, smoked it, 
at the time, you know, like you grind up the weed, you use tobacco or whatever. But I just grind, grind up the thing because I've seen people doing it, man can see, man can do, you know what I mean? Smoked in the back garden, you know, that like, I see walls moving towards me and everything. And I was like, whoa, what is this? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> this is insane, do you know what I mean? Picked up a little smoking habit, you know, and now, being a kid, you got to fund this habit, do you know what I mean? Because you're not going to be asking for £20 of your parents, you know what I'm saying, no, every day. Plan, yeah. So, especially, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, I, I think I remember, I must have saved up a little bit of money and got some weed. You know, at the time, I think like a Q must have been like 35 pounds or 30 pounds, some stuff like that. And then you break it down because I've seen the older boys do it. A couple of drawers. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah, like smoke, basically. Exactly. So who caught you, the teachers, or they just heard that you were selling No, I, 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 sold, I, sold, I sold some weed to some younger boys. I think at the time I was in year 10, so I sold some weed to some year 8 boys. Right? Like, you know, like they were shameless. Have you seen the program Shameless? That's like okay. Frank Gallagher, yeah, yeah, you know them yeah, dusty yeah. estate. I ain't watched it, but I know what you're talking yeah, about. Yeah, you know them yeah, dusty that, estate, yeah, yeah. man, they look like they don't shower. So they always have that's kids that just run around, they don't shower and shit. Like, I remember some kid coming up to me in school and just asking for like a, a 10 bag of weed or whatever. Right? So you give it to him? Yeah, I sold it to him. You know, I'm thinking, yeah, like, prof. And at the time, I think profit was like 25 pounds or something like that. So I sold it to him and him and his friend um, went back to the fields. You know, at the time, my school had moved to another part of the um, um, area yeah, and the kids smoked a bit of weed and one of them's had a bad reaction to it so yeah his kids started spazzing out you know so his little friend that he's smoking with weed with he's panicked and he's run to the teachers and he said yo you know oh man spazzing out you know i don't know what's happening i don't know if the kid was fitting or something yeah, like that. A fit or something right yeah. yeah so his friends bugged out you know run to this run to the school teacher the first one he come across and he goes yo my man's not in a good way back there. So when they brought him back there, they could see that, you know, they could smell weed smell in the clothes, weed. they could see that roach or whatever was left over on the floor. So they said to the local man that was with him, says, yo, you're gonna tell us where you got this from. Um, yeah, uh, he said, yeah, some <laughs> older guy called Adam. No, <laughs> he gave you up. He gave me up. So I'm sat in class, right? I'm sat in class, I remember sitting in class, yeah. Please, the, 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 the teachers have called the feds in straight away. Like, yo, we've got a seller. You know what I'm saying? We've got a narcotic seller in school. The police have turned up. I remember sitting in class. And a friend of mine, yeah, he's actually come in and he's like, Ra, I've heard your name being mentioned by the police downstairs. No, Knowing that I've got weed on me, I don't know what's going on. So I know my mom wouldn't make it up. So now I started panicking. So in, in class, I was a bit of a jerk in class. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so I started panicking, I spun around, I said, yo, to the whole classroom, yeah, because the teacher got called out. I said, yo, who wants to take my bag? Like, you know. Because we didn't know. Yeah, yeah, who's going to take my bag? Because obviously, if I don't want to walk out of the classroom with a bag, mm -hmm. and they're like, they're like yo, you it's stop there. Me. Exactly. So I said, yo, who wants to take my bag? Everyone's kept quiet. That's when you see heads just looking down. And, um, yeah, one kid said to me, one little chubby kid. I'll take it. I'll take it. Do you know what I'm saying? So I looked at this kid and I thought, rah. This kid's gonna help me after. <laughs> and I, do you know what? I kind of used to, no, I won't say bully, but I used to give the kid a hard time. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? He was like a Randall, you know, like a Randall from like oh, recess. Yeah. So I looked at this kid and I thought, I felt guilt instantly when he said, Yeah, I'll help you. Right? I gave him the bag. Uh, the feds have called me out. The teachers called me out. The feds have called me out. I said, I'm taking you, get, come with all your stuff. So I've just left it at the bag. I've gone inside one room. The teacher's there. The feds are there. You're asking me about drugs. I'm saying, I don't know what you're talking about. Next thing, there's a knock on the door. It's over here. They said, yeah, we got his bag. Right? The kid is handed it over. Oh. He, yeah. He's handed it over. <laughs> so he didn't even got like question. He's gay. Nah, nah. Oh, he said you he's up. He's handed it over. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's what he said you are. That's yeah. all, from all those <laughs> that I've been giving him. That's, get, that's, that's his get back. That's his get back. That's his get back. So he's handed it over. I remember looking through the little glass panel. I see him with a little smirk on his face. He's handed it over, yeah. I knew that was it, man. Anyway, I got kicked out of school permanently. Did you I remember, punch up? Well, I didn't see him again. Do you know what I found out? The kid was a police cadet. Oh, so the whole time I've been giving him a super hard time, he goes to police cadets anyway. So that was his payback. I never came to back to school. That was his way of getting rid of me, and he succeeded in that. So he dashed you up and bam, yeah, you're yeah, gone now. Pat and gone. 
That's it, guys. On the road, man. Yeah, That's it. Gone. Yeah, yeah. Gone. I don't. I don't know what the hell ever happened to him. But if he ever sees this, he will probably have a smirk on his face. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Do you still remember? Do you still recognize? I remember his first name, his surname. And he's probably it's changed. People change in it. But do you know what? If I was to see him, no hard feelings yeah, in it. Like it's what it is. That's it's fate, path, isn't it? Path, I remember, path, yeah, hundred percent. I believe in fate. That was always meant to happen. So obviously at that age, what, 15, isn't it? 14, 15? 14, going on to 15. That's so you're hanging around with older boys outside now? Yeah, 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 we're hanging around with older boys, you know. But obviously, um, we always used to get punched up by older boys as well in school, mm. you know. So when that happens in school, you know, you look, turn around, you look at someone else. Because you know, remember, I don't know if you've had older brothers. If your older brother gives it to you and you've got a younger brother and he gives you mouth, then you're going to do... So you're doing you do. the same thing. Basically. Exactly, so oh. it's like passing on the... the you know, Lashes. Yeah, exactly, exactly. But yeah, um... Yeah, so I got kicked out of school. I had to go to um, um, uh, centre, you know, for like excluded kids and stuff mm, like that. Yeah, you know, um, yeah, and that's where I finished off school. You know, so but you didn't get your GCSEs finished. Man, do you know what? I'm gonna be bluntly honest with you, bro. I don't even know what I got for my GCSEs, bro. You didn't care, really. Nah, that was the last one. Yeah. When, you, when you were kicked out, how did your parents react? Oh, they were devastated, man. But do you know what? To be honest with you, they always knew there was something just. Something just, you know, this child, man, you know, what? let me tell you something, you can have the best parents in the world, you know, you can try, you know, um, if it doesn't work out, it's just not your fault, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, you've tried your hardest, and more time, the parents are racking their brains thinking, what, where did I go wrong, oh, man? It's not but even them. It's not them, man, because look, you know, fast forward, I've been, I've been to, I've been in prison, right, with people that are from good families, you know, like, they never had to come on the roads, mm. but for some but stupid the reason road. they chose the road. Oh, yeah, exactly. You know, they, it's you're from sometimes. You know that. Guys that were raised in Chelsea, you know, mm. like in mansions and stuff like that. Mm. Like you did not have to shoot the guy, but it's you felt like you wanted to be a part of the culture of not having anything course, and yeah. shooting and robbing and all that stuff. It's led you being there. Mm. You didn't even have to be there. Whereas some of us that come from unfortunate circumstances mm. this is what we have to do because we don't have and this is what we know do you know what i'm how saying to get it, how to get it so mm. you know you can have everything and your kid still can choose to go the other way i, I know people like that right yeah. now yeah, yeah. families got money exactly but they're outside the road yeah you you would ask them right, why why and he, 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 can't, he can't tell you why and they don't. And the bad thing is, they don't even realize until they get caught up. Exactly. It's only when they get caught up exactly. that it hits them. Isn't it? Exactly. What I mean. exactly. I think now it's kind of like it's looked at kind of as fashionable. Yeah. To be a drug dealer, and it's kind of like a you know, see when we were shot on the road, is we were, we would hide it from our parents. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's because it's something like it's like shameful sort of thing. We knew it was shameful. Obviously, it, within our circle, it was something, but within the community, we know yo, this is not the thing to do. Right. right. But we, we knew it was wrong, and yeah. like what I mean. But now it's kind of like, if you're a drug dealer, you, you got to let everyone know you're a drug dealer. Exactly. You know what I mean? yeah, yeah. But people used to ask us, like, you know, like you meet a chick or whatever. What do you do? You say oh, I've got a car rental company. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You wouldn't exactly. say you're a drug dealer. Yeah. Was there? Whoever needed to know needed to know. Yeah. But if you're not in that life, you don't need to know. Exactly. What you do. Exactly. But now it's like man's on Instagram. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Putting it out yeah, there yeah, for yeah. everyone to see. Yeah, exactly. You know? exactly. And whatever. So when would you say like? Start deteriorating towards like you know real crime and. No, I say about sixteen. So I had my first. After that, yeah, I had my yeah. first gun at sixteen. Why? Why did you? Why did you get a gun? Because I sold, you sell drugs now. You know what I'm saying? You're selling drugs outside of school. So you felt you. I noticed that as well. Um, the area that I grew up in. We never had any older guys. Mm. Do you know what I'm saying? There was no such thing as older. Everywhere that you go now, you got older guys trying to exploit young boys. Me and the guys that I grew up with around my age, we were free thinking guys. We never had any outside influences. People you putting you on People putting basically. nothing on us. Yeah. No. So, you know, we always knew, you know, if we're having beef, we're having beef with guys our age or older. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? And if we do have guys with beef with guys with, um, our, with our age, uh, they're going to tend to go and um, get our older brothers and stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Um, so at 16, my mum found my first gun, my mum found at the age of 16. Um, she threw that in the bin, and I remember once I uh, ended up with a, a like a you know like a handgun that was powerful then and now. Do you know what I mean? And that's I think that was a setback or three grand. Do you know what I'm saying? That gun was worth about three grand back then, or even even more. Um, my mom started going through because especially if your kid's not up to no good, you're gonna start going through stuff like you know, like what's it keeping in the house and. Um, she found a gun at the time, and I had to address her about that as well because I really wanted that 
I really, really wanted that thing back. You know, uh, the first one she threw away. Huh? She in the bin, yeah? No, the first one she threw away. Yeah. So I charged that to the game. Like, All right, cool. Do you know what? I'm not going to address her about it. Because my sister told me, yo, your mom find, find the gun. This was a big shotgun at the time. Yeah. Um, and to be honest with you, I wasn't even ready to shoot people with it. You know? You just felt safe with it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I mean? Um, I bypassed the whole carrying knife thing and I went straight to arms. Straight to knife, straight yeah, to guns. Straight to, yeah, straight to guns. Um, so she found that, she threw it in the bin. The bin man came and collected it. I didn't even know, because you know when you stash something and you leave it? Mm -hmm. Did you know it was gone? Yeah, it was gone. So this time I got a smaller thing, but really um, high power, high powered. Um, she found it, so I had to put her on that, you know, because I really, really, I saved up a long time for that. So, you know, I knew a conversation was due to take place. So I came over to her one day, I said, yeah, mom, we found something in my room. And she goes, yeah, she'd been waiting for me to come out to her. But this one, she hadn't thrown away, actually. She says, yeah. I said, yeah, um, I'm going to need that bag. <laughs> she said to me, what? <laughs> you know, like, you have the nerve to, <laughs> ask, back <for> me. <laughs> to ask back for me. But she got it, man. Huh? And she, she actually had it stashed on me, because it's small, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. She said, I said, I need that bag. She said, for what? So now I have to think, I can't say I've got to shoot people, or just in case. Somebody else. I said, yeah, someone else's. I need that back, mom, because I'm going to, you know what I'm saying? Well, give job. Yeah. So she said, if you you got to choose, you stay at home with us, or you choose the gun. I leave. I leave. So I chose the gun. I left. Uh, and I left the house. And that's when, at that stage, now I'm out of the house. You know, but despite the fact that I used to get, I used to get so high, I'll come into the house, I wouldn't even interact with the family. Straight members. to your room, straight to my <laughs> You know the pattern. Oh, you, know, you can't stick around family oh. smelling a weed high. Oh, yeah. <laughs> They've been with you their whole life. They know when you're not right. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? They know when you're not right. So yeah, nah, I left the house. Plus, I wasn't a good influence to the rest of the family members in the house as well, because I had a brother and I had a, uh, three sisters at the house. So, you know, sometimes you've got to throw away one bad apple to try and save the collective. You've got to try it. But you know what's deep? It's only now you realise, like, the trauma you put your parents through. Yeah. It? Like, yeah. come on, think about her finding that. She's not, she knows, isn't it? Like, yo, he's involved. Exactly. And that, that's heartache, isn't it? Yeah. Because obviously, I've got youths now, so I know that like, exactly. it's deep, you know? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we just took it, like, as a joke. Like, yeah, yeah, right? yeah. It's all fun and games. Just like being in school and in class, you clown oh. around. But little do you know, the teacher himself is frustrated because he's trying to deliver a lesson here. Mm -hmm. This is his job and this is what he does for a yeah. living. If he fell, they're going to look at his results and say, yo, tsh, whatever you're teaching these kids, it's not working. What What was your, um, like, goals or role? Just make bread, basically. Make peace, man. I just... You it's wanted money, that's it. Make money, um, cars, you know... Um, I didn't even have a driving license. <laughs> you know, like most roads, man. Yeah, like most roads, Because at that time, it's easy to get away. But producer, it? Yeah, yeah you producer. Produce it, yeah. Or you just, uh, provisional. And you know what? At those times, you can drive past friends without insurance because they never had those little... They couldn't check. Yeah, uh, they couldn't. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. You need that seven day bringing your paperwork. Uh, exactly. So once you, you get that producer, you're legit for seven days. Yeah. Right around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You can, so you can slide through. Because nowadays, you can't even do that. Nah, no, you need no, insurance. Right. Yeah, you need. You just drive past them and straight away it flashes up. Even like, the, yeah, the yeah. AMPR cameras. Yeah, yeah. This guy ain't got insurance. You let them know you're driving. That yeah, license. yeah. So obviously now you left the house. You got strapped. Yeah, got strapped. I know where it's going, but the viewers don't know. I already know where it's going. So obviously it's, it's downhill now, isn't it? It's downhill because now you know, smoke weed, you know, um, shot in weed, and the shot coke. I got straps, and we're running up on people now. Like in the sense of we're beating men up, you know, there's stabbings happening. Beefs and local stuff. Yeah, 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 there's stabbings happening, um, you know. Um, so for me, actually, it took one stabbing that actually pushed me more and deeper into that life, do you know what I mean? Um, yeah, there was a stabbing that happened in the area, and um, everyone else was masked up other than me, you know, uh, supposedly, you know, and. Um, yeah, it, allegedly. It me. Allegedly. So now uh, you're a target. Yeah, it made me the target. And I didn't even do no stabbing. I was just, you know what I'm saying? I was, yeah. I was there. You saw it? Yeah, yeah. I was there. And uh, yeah, it come back to me and that was it. You know, I already, I was already walking with guns. I already had that, you know. So for me, I got stabbed back as a retaliation. And, uh, for that? Yeah, for that. Supposedly there was a hit put on me, 
you know, you know, little shits running around the area doing shit. So there was a big money put on me at the time. And uh, yeah, there was a stabbing that occurred where I ended up in hospital for three, three, two to three weeks. I was in a coma. Did you get stabbed? Uh, in, the, in the stomach. You know, I got rushed and then I got stabbed. I think it was like a little samurai thing or something like that. And I pierced my organs inside. So I ended up with a zipper, you know, because I was bleeding from the mouth. And I, I remember that precise day as well. Um, you know, so when I got out of hospital now, um, 17 now, you know, I've had a year out at my mum's house. Um, I wasn't looking to get put in that same predicament again. Do you know what I mean? Well, it was mad. He's mentioned he was stabbed like it was nothing. You know? Now, back then it was... It was yeah, but, but it's deep though. Like, yeah, of course, but it's like... Do you know what I'm it's saying? It's like, like, we can't accept that's a part of that life. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But when you got stabbed, how how's your mum, man? Uh, she was traumatised, man. She's, do you know what? My mum, at the time, she's, she's giving up, man. She's like, bro, like, you know... You know, um, I don't even know what to do, you know. Was there any, like, fear that like, I could have died? Nah, you know. I was just... It's just part of the game of, that we're playing. But the thing is, this is a real game, because if you die, that's it. Game over, man. Alhamdulillah, that's what Islam makes you think deep. Yeah, 100%. But you know when you're living that life, bro, you don't care, you know that. You know, you know I got stabbed in my leg, yeah? I got, but I got stabbed 80 miles away from where I, where I live. Far, so I got done in the back of the leg, but it was like it was, it was a complicated situation. I can't go into it. So man goes, oh, let's go to hospital. I say, oh, bun that. So I wrapped a thing around the leg. I say, go back to the ends. We drove eighty miles. I could hit an artery. <laughs> and guess what we're doing? We're running weed on the way back. Ooh, that's naughty. But you know what? It's definitely even crossed man's no, mind. hundred percent. Man's yeah, high, bled out. bled out, and we're catching like we just we're not even like taking it seriously, but. Thinking about it now, bro, imagine... You're being in front of your creator. In that condition. Because you get asked, you know, what was your last moments? What led to you being in this position? Bro, and you know when we got to the uh, hospital, I gave my brethren all my phones, I said, feds are going to come, innit? So man's thinking about the wrong things, you know what you're thinking, bro, it might clip something, you know? Mm -hmm. So might, you know, be careful, I'm just thinking, okay, okay, give the phone, the work phone, <laughs> and stuff like that. So like, it's such a mad mentality, yeah. it is, you know? It's only now when you think back, I say, bro... Alhamdulillah. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Yeah, so that's the thing that really gets me now, boy. Imagine you died while you were high. Bro, do you know the day that I got rolled on? I was, I was picking up drugs. But you must have been smoking weed as well. Like. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Smoking. And I was meant to be picking up some weed to sell. So I, I think to myself at the time, I hadn't, I hadn't made a single rakat in my life. Do you know what I'm saying? You appear in front of your creator and you're like, yo, you know, you're created for the sole purpose of worshipping your creator. You know what I'm saying? And being a civilized member of society. That was the last thing on your mind, isn't it? Nah, that didn't even step into my mind. Do you know what I'm saying? My mind was all guns, drugs, whatever. So, at, you, what, you in the hospital for two to three weeks, you said, yeah? But I woke up. Well, you know, I was like, yourself, what day is it? You never thought to yourself, like, boy, you know what? I could have died there. I met, met my Lord. Nothing. Nah, 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 nah. But do you know what? Precisely, if I was going to be honest with you, I've always had uh, I've always had a man as a kid growing up. You, know you always I mean? believed. Always, always. I always believed there's one creator. As young as I can remember, and God's my witness, I've always known. You know, I remember once I used to, uh, I don't know, I've said this before, but I used to watch TV, right? And uh, I'd be smirking at the TV, you know, like some little possessed kid, and I'd be like, these people don't know that I'm watching them. And I'll stop and I'll scratch my chin, and I'll be like, yo, just like I was, oh, I'm watching these people. I wonder if there's someone out there watching God's me. Watching you. Do you understand what I'm saying? So I've always had that element. Of, of, of consciousness. consciousness and also not just that as well I've, do, I've dove into other religions as a kid mm. do you know what I'm saying I was, I was back here before suppose being from New York a lot of Muslims and it's mm. multi-diverse yeah, multi -diverse. but um, Islam was the last thing that I cared that, that was my last stop do you know what I'm saying mm -hmm. um, obviously growing up you, you know you hear oh yeah you, know, you can't smoke weed as a Muslim you're like oh gosh you can't link girls. Oh gosh! You can't get drunk. Oh, so what's the point of life then? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? As a kid, what I'm meant to enjoy in life? This is what? What kind of life is this? <laughs> Do you understand? Know Especially as a kid. Um. So you know, as a kid growing up, as a young boy, that's all there is to it. Especially growing up, coming from a you know uh, such an environment, you know. But I had been in so many other religions, and I for me, it just never sat well. So you're 16. Now you've been stabbed. You've come out of hospital. 17. 17, you come out of hospital. Come out of hospital. What's so now, revenge? Now, now, at the time, revenge didn't come until later on. So at the time, because obviously, you know, 
um, the guy that's put the hit on me, they were pretty high up in the okay. this thing, do you know what I'm saying? So revenge, you got to mop down the whole squad, you know what yeah. I'm saying? You ain't just going to ping one person and... You, know, you got to let the slide so, over. Yeah, you have to sit on it yeah, for the time being time. and bide your time. But that's the thing, going out and doing things to people mm -hmm. because, you know, what do you step on on your way up? Because on your way down, you know, that's true. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? You, you bump heads again. Okay, yeah, so, um, yeah, I had to buy my time at the time and you just have to get gain more experience on how to move, how to move correctly. Um, like I said to you, we didn't have any older, so you couldn't take your issues to to no one. You have to buy buy on buy your tongue for the time being. So anyway, I just remember once I had an incident in college where I ended up getting rushed in college. Uh, um, when I got rushed, I got rushed in front of a girl, you know, and uh, Pride that was a sucker move, man. They're hundred percent pride. No, I I was so pissed. I jumped on a bus. I went home to get my gun. And I grabbed my gun and I jumped back on the bus and I came to the college. <laughs> like, just pride, how man. hurt have you got to be? <laughs> like, no Uber, no taxi. I remember just getting filled in and I got up. I, 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 thinking about it now, it's the girl that actually initiated it. But she said to me, oh, you know, back in the day, like, oh, yeah, them, them boys are looking at you, you know? So I, now she said that because I haven't been paying attention. Now I'm looking at them. But that's going to open up a situation. So now you're like, what? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? From nothing. Exactly. She should have she, she just kept her mouth shut because I didn't see anything. And now you're going back there with a strap. Now I'm going back there with a strap. So I've come back, I've come back to the college. <laughs> Walking around the, the, the college. Bumped into one of the boys that tucked me in. Because they're called their older brothers, actually. Mm -hmm. And these boys are um, from a neighbouring area, Hackney. So they tucked me in, you know. Um, and at the time, I've been stabbed. So I ain't trying to hold no L's or nothing like that. And, yeah, I chased, one, chased down one of the boys. Uh, he clipped the stair, he clipped the, uh, the, 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 the pavement. I caught him because he was jetting. You know, once when, when the gun's produced, you'd be surprised um, like how many people yeah. friends will pull each other back just to get out of the way. You know, so friends will use each other as shields. Guys cutting through some estate next to the college, clip the clip the um, clip the uh, curb. Oh. Yeah, stood over him. You know, I whacked him with the thing. Yeah, because it's just right on the corner from the college. College, the estate, and his camera out. So I've hit him with the thing. Bust his head. He's jumped up. Ah, screamed. Ran towards the college. I seen him pointing at me, pointing at the uh, college uh, security. So I've slid off. Hit the gun in the bush. Gone back into the college. Yeah, sat there. Like nothing's happened. Right. Armed police have been called into the college. All right. So as I'm sat there, the teacher gets called out again. Same thing happens. This is a great second just school. Teacher gets called out again. I'm just sat there. I've got my bag. There's no gun in there. I used to carry an art folder because for, I used to do art. Okay. You know, I thought that would have been the easier thing in it. You don't have to use your brains, your straw, but even that was hard. Right? So I'm sat there. Next thing, um, um, Fez just stormed the class. Oh, please! Because they ain't going to call you up politely. This guy's got a gun at him, supposedly. <laughs> Stormed the class, remember them grabbing me. Like everyone. In front of everyone. I feel sorry for them little rich white kids that were in the class. They shit themselves. They'll probably see that shit on like cops or something like that. They've seen like a group of man, ten man rushing the class, guns out. Helmet yeah, helmets on, blacked out, they grab me, throw me over the table. <sighs> Screaming, scare scare tactic, innit? Chuck me over the table, grab me, zip the uh, grab him on my clothes, zip tied me, took me into a living room. Um Said to me, yo, we got had allegations that you got a gun. Is this your bag? I said, yeah, that's my bag. They said, where's the gun? I said, what gun? Right. I fought quick. Um, I said, I didn't have no gun. I said, they said, oh, my man said you hit him. I said, I didn't hit him. He tripped oh, he up. Told them. Yeah, he snitched oh, on me, of course. He told him everything. Obviously, like I said, when guns come out, mm. people's true characters yeah, come into your existence. I said, he said, yeah, he's bust my head with the gun. And da -da 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 -da. I said, listen. We had a disagreement. I didn't even snitch. Even after, his, I said we had a disagreement, right? Um, I've chased after him, yeah, because I wanted to fight him. He's tripped up, busts his head. After seeing that, I've left him. I didn't even get onto him, right? And he said, "Bro, why? Why was you running from me if you, if you know, just gonna have a fight?" I said, "I had a scaffolding pole at the time, which he slightly mistaken for a gun. That's right, Do you know what I mean?" Um, they, they even asked me, where's the scaffolding pulled down? I said, I don't know, I threw it. When I, see him grow, when I see that he was bleeding, I dashed it. You know what I'm saying? They spun around, started spazzing out on a guy. 
Why are you going in us? Yeah, wasting, wasting police time. time. There's armed police. Armed like police, of course. Of course, that's that big money invested in these people. To see. Yeah. I thought it was calm, right? So, um, two months later, I'm in my mum's house. I um, found the truck. I hear a helicopter. You know, and at the time, I'd sent my mum abroad because I've been doing robberies with these guns and selling drugs. I'm trying to, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to show her, like, I'm not all bad, like, you know, hey, mom, where do you want to go this summer? Yeah. She's like, yeah, well, I want to go back home. I said, sorted. How much is the ticket? Yeah, I'll send you back there. And I've got some money here for you as well. Go back to Uganda or whatever. So she gets on a plane to Uganda. I'm at my mum's house two months later. I'm, I'm in my uh, childhood bedroom. Above that, there's a helicopter just circulating. I lived uh, on a road where houses were all grouped together, so it wasn't like detached. The terrace houses. Right? Yes. So feds have to jump six, seven gardens to get to the middle. They ain't doing that, you know, with all their guns and all that type of stuff. So they got to hire a helicopter to cover the back door. So as they're covering the back door, I hear a helicopter above my room. I thought I was half asleep. I'm thinking, yo, what's that? The light is shining through my window, my bedroom window. I jumped out of bed, panicking, run downstairs. I don't know where I was running, right? As soon as I got to the bottom of the stairs, the door flew off. Woof. Oh, police! I'm thinking, oh, these guys are reluctant. Man. <laughs> these guys again! <laughs> right? They're shouting, get on the floor! You know, get on your knees! I don't know. You're shouting, you're giving me 10 different orders. Like, what do you want me to do? All I know is get on the floor, put my hands in. They stormed the house. My older sister was in there. I'm shitting myself. My older sister's in there, yeah? I'm thinking, bruv, I ain't even. I, I, I'm at this stage. Just take me to jail, bruv, because this 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 girl's never gonna let me leave. Live it down, bruv. They've took me uh, to the uh, back of the car. They've ransacked the house. Right. They didn't find the gun. You know. I had. They're still looking for that strap. They're finding. they adamant. I got a mash. Oh, Obviously, wow. I, I, out of college, I used yeah, to. Yeah, but they yeah, yeah, that's exactly. what put them onto you. Now, yeah, actually. you'd be surprised. No, not just that. I don't. Not just that. You'd be surprised how many like people no, are grassing. Yeah. Like this game is not what. No, 100, like 100%, yeah. people have been grassing from the mafia. Yeah. Mm, what yeah. makes you think a couple of little sheep kids ain't gonna yeah, grass if you pull true. out something that they're not ready to deal with? That's true. So um, the ramps at the house, rip at the house. I'm in the back of the car. I'm thinking, young guy, yo, bro, they didn't find the coke that I had. They didn't find it, you know, the weed that I had, they didn't find the gun. And at the time, I had a long ass shotgun, you know, a farmer's shotgun. I, can't, I took a liking to those because they're very intimidating. When you're robbing a man and you see them two nozzles, people are complying because they're thinking, what is coming out of those? That's them old school armor. Old robbers, school, right? exactly, all right? Um, they didn't find it. So when they searched the house, they just let me go, right? I can't believe it. I went back to the spot, the spot's still there because I used to stash it between my garden and next to the neighbor's garden. So they have to reach deep in there and just search it. They didn't search that. They didn't find nothing. All right? So I'm thinking, yeah, calm. Anyway, now my mum's come back. I've had to leave the house. I've got a place in an area called Manor Park. It's in a... She must be vexed along. Yeah, yeah, she heard. I said, Mom, I didn't do anything. I don't know why they came. You know, like, if, they, if I'd done anything, they would have found something. Yeah. I promise I never had any drugs. Anyway, they've come to my place at Manor Park. I remember once. Like, remember, I've been stabbed, so I ain't really trying to be in the same predicament. Do you know what I mean? Um, so I'm asleep in my new flat. It's got a scaffolding around it. And I've got a shotgun. You know, you know, do you remember them wire feed bags that they used to have? They added these bags, like little string bags, or tie it in that wire feed. Like the JD bags? It's like a JD yeah, bag, but it's a cloth yeah, one. Yeah, I know you're talking about. Yeah. Mike um, used to make one as well. Yeah, yeah. So I'll keep the shotgun in there, it'll sawn off, and I'll keep it on my windowsill, because I'm thinking, why, if man run up on me, because remember, ah, there's a bounty on me. So, and I, I've been poked up and stabbed up. So the bounty's like, still on you, even though they Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I remember waking up with this thing tube in my, down my throat that, that hurt, and you know, your your, yeah, yeah, yeah. your has got holes in, you know, like you got the pipe in your reefer to help you go to the toilet and all that type of stuff. So you don't really put back Nah, the nah, I remember I just had to learn how to walk again, you know, the. Um, oh, right, so it was quite a long rehabilitation. Yeah, process. yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I remember when you had that whole staples, yeah. I had the staple thing. So you, ages, you, you. Yeah, you got to use a little zoomer frame and that to just learn how to walk wow. again. At night time, that's when you use the. Uh, what's that green stuff? No. Um, what's that? It's not. What's that pain relief thing that they give you? That people. Oh, morphine. Want? Yes. Yeah. That stuff didn't even work on me. Right. Do you know what I'm saying? Because at night time, I'll just be overpressing it. Pressing it. So <laughs> off a little while. Exactly. <laughs> um, so, I'm asleep. Next thing I hear, because I've had my door reinforced. Because I know that when they try to ram your door, right, it bounces back. Oh, yeah. So, I've had the door reinforced with a plastic door. So, I've heard, poof, poof, this is two months later. 
I'm thinking, nah, these men are coming like, um, you know, like, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, re religiously, they're just consistently banging on my on door. Me. Yeah, they're on me. Like, and it's the thing is, you're searching me and you're finding nothing. Like, why are you so adamant that I've got it? Um, bang on your door, bang on your door. Oh, please! So, do you know what I did? I bust my back in the door, right? Looking, threw the shotgun out. It hit the armed fed who was on the edge of the uh, scaffolding. Because they had blocks with torches just oh, pointing at the back door. You didn't realise it. I didn't realise. As soon as you hear noise coming from the front, the first thing you do to distribute and get rid of whatever you have in the house is busting your door and just lo lobbing exactly, it out. Exactly, it yeah. hit the armed fed. He fell off the scaffolding. He fell off the scaffolding. Don't Madness. Do you onto the... He fell off the scaffold. I don't know where he went. Oh, but for that, uh, the retaliation was to literally physically, physically cut me. Yeah, I remember yeah. the zip tied me, took me into a dark room and just started literally That's having it. goals and me, treating me like a punching bag. <laughs> They that, was the first time, yeah. that was the first time I went to jail. First time I went to jail. So what, did, did they put any charge for actually hitting the Fed with them? Nah, because they, they tucked me in, man. Yeah, they got, they, they they got took me to a dark it. room, zip-tied me like this, head down, because remember, they're all dressed the same. So anyone could be hitting you. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You have like, to, you're not really going to make a complaint. Nah, nah, nah I'm going to jail. Exactly. At, what, so where did you go? Uh, ended up going to a prison called Chelmsford. That was the first Chelmsford, prison yeah. that I went to. So you got 17, 18 now? Right? 18, Chelmsford. 18 years old. Yeah. How long did you get? I got three years. Three years. Uh, I feel like that was now you got five mandatory. Yeah, I have a son of shotgun. Shotguns are licensed to hold, innit? So, yeah, yeah, they're not like handguns, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I've been, I, yeah, I've been with people that have got a year. Yeah, Yeah. so for me, I just said, yeah, listen, um, you know, I'm, I'm holding it because I owe, you know, yeah, money yeah. and all that type of nonsense. Standard check. Yeah, 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 100%. So I got three years, that, that eight year months that I got in there, it was nothing. That family was just, must have been upset. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wounded. I've I've took them through. I've took them through. Yeah. But that that was gonna, literally the beginning. We're gonna yeah. get to that later. But well, your first night now, bam, in jail. How that feel? You didn't get a bell, did you? No, nah, we don't make. I don't make bell. Bam. Straight, yeah, we don't. We don't make. Listen, once you go jail your first time round, you're never gonna make bell again. Bell. Chills on remand, isn't it? Yeah, it was a like remand. Yeah, they don't want it for long. Yeah, yeah. So what happened? So that's the first night in jail. That was the first time. How does that feel, man? This is unfamiliar territory. Do you know what I mean? Like, I don't know who's in there. You know what I'm saying? What I'm going to have to do to try and survive. So like anticipation it was anticipation of what's yeah. in there. Like, I, like, I've been in jail for a while. And even when they have to, like, you know, um, like, Mufti, Mufti, like Mufti, not, squad, Mufti yeah. squad have to run up in there and just wrap me up and, mm -hmm. and or ship me to another prison. You're always in the back of the van thinking, who's in another prison? Mm -hmm. you, you never know. Right? Yeah, you never know, like, who's in there? Who have I wronged that's going to be in there? And the thing is with prison, prison comes like ends, you know, like so areas. For a time, the area might be popping and it might be a no-go zone, and all of a sudden, the bad boys ain't there no more. It's a new breed. Mm -hmm. Or it might be a soft area. And now it's a no go zone. So with prisons, it's kind of like that. It changes season. So from east, are uh, youth offenders? You go to Chelmsford from there, yeah? So no, I went to Chelmsford and then I went to Felton. From there to go to Felton? Yeah, Felton. Some really bad bullying in Felton. That's right? been bad all day long. Super bad bullying. You know, I, you know, I, I'm a person that's um, done a lot of bad you, stuff. You know, in my youth life. offenders are like that, bro. Yeah, bro. Because remember, I've gone to a grown man just calm, innit? Mm. But when I went to Felton, Chelsea was mixed in it. Yeah, Chelsea was mixed. Yeah. But when I went to Felton, I remember that all the boys are easy, you know, they would just tell the young boys where I sit back. Because sure. all the boys in the yeah. area. And yeah. that's um, in Felton, man, like I remember well, there must have been about 30 guys banging on the window. I'm um, trying to produce it. Um, told the, the kid, kill sink. yourself, oh, kill man. yourself. And, all, and it's all in sync. They're going, poof, poof, poof. kill yourself. Kill. I'm laying in bed. <laughs> I, I'm thinking, who are they talking about? And the kids at the window go, leave me alone. The kid's on, on the verge of breaking. I'm thinking, bruv, this is bad stuff. Like They all come together collectively to, try to, to, make him to get suicide. the kid to commit suicide. That's deep, and I, Yeah, even as a grown man now, I even think about that and I think, bruv, rah, like, those are some... Were you mad in the door? Uh, nah, no <laughs> way. Uh, that was my first time in Felton, innit? Yeah. So as I'm laying and I'm hearing this, I'm thinking, what kind of scumbags am I living with here? I mean, what is youth offenders is just like that. Yeah. You know, people would jump on the bandwagon. You know, 100%. One brother would do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Everyone's kind of like... I think one. you always have like a top boy and like youth offenders and the rest of the groups just, just try to... You see like when certain kind of celebrities went in jail, I'm not going to say who, and all the 
Mas o Bang Louie não tem. Sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sing, sing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They'll make sing. Yeah, yeah, they'll make Bro, I'm telling you, if you're, not, if you're not on smoke in youth vendors, you're gonna have problems. You have a fight over it. This Anything. stupidest thing. Yeah, no. Over that, oh, it's my shot on pool. Canteen, pool. Do you know what I'm saying? You fenders, man, is just scrapping galore, man. Do you know what I'm saying? Just fights. So we went from Chelmsford to to there, then obviously you got sentenced. Yeah, I got sentenced. Where did you go? Uh, from there, I went Rochester. Oh, okay, Rochester. Yeah, I went to Rochester. What was that like? Rochester is actually that the boys the were more older. Work. Yeah, the boys were more older because they got an incentive. If you look and Get behave, out. yeah. If mm-hmm. you look and behave, this you know because they had a resettlement wing where they will let you go out and work on the uh, prison ground outside mm-hmm. the prison grounds. So anyone with half a brain cell would want to try and make it onto this resettlement wing. Most of us will never make it on there, mm-hmm. but it gives you an incentive, incentive to behave. Yeah. And I suppose people got their sentence and they want to go. Go home now. Exactly. Start missing, working towards that a little bit as well. So. During remand, there's always a chance of you beating the case. Mm. So you can do whatever you want. Yeah, you want. It doesn't matter. Yeah, really. exactly. But once you get, once the judge goes, you know, 10 years in prison, you're like, oh gosh. Oh you know, yeah, so that's when it sinks in. You're like, right, I need to get out. So now, boom, you've got your sentence, you've got to register. You've got to do a year and a half out of that, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. At the time, I think I'd already done about six months or seven months or something like that. Six so. months, yeah. That's what, what, you're fighting a lot in jail? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In jail. In general, winning is skinny, and I came out like the uh, fourth biggest. You know what I'm saying? That's all about biceps. You know, like in <laughs> New Fenders, it's just benching, benching, bench press, and biceps. There's no logic to it. There's no logic. There's no, like, you know, you got to train legs, you got to train this. Okay, yeah. No. Just look hench. Ex- look hench, intimidating, punch man up, <laughs> right, and showcase your strength. How much and you can that's what it is, And that's what it is. So you've got three years, you were in Rochester, basically. Yeah. Um, you've done your rest of your bird in Rochester. And you got out from there? Yeah, yeah, I got out from there. I um Rochester was a uh, obviously you had shower in yourself, you had phone in yourself. Um, you know, I uh, didn't really, really need much. And uh, certain prisons you have that that closeness, that community closeness. As long as, you know, you're with like minded people, you know, um you gotta be able to turn that bad experience into uh something you can either learn from or you can be able to get from. Do you know what I mean? Did you did you learn anything like not like a lot of people learn how to become a better criminal? Yes, I learned how to become a better criminal. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, what I, I learned. I, I knew that already. Yeah, I learned. I'd be like anything else. Like no, you, nothing else. No, I was like, bro, is this what I've been? Is this what I've been kind of? Missing, you know, yeah. yeah. No, the only thing that had been stopping me, the only thing that had been stopping me from my uh, from causing maximum damage. <laughs> Right in the back of my mind was always the thought of kind of prison. Like, rah, if I go to prison, man, I want like it's the, it's the unknown. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, that was the only thing that was in the back now of my mind. Done it. Now I've done it. I'm like, it's like wait until I get out. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So, um, yeah, when I got out, so I got out and um, I got out with the thirst of of, of trying to make money because I got out. I got out nineteen, turning twenty twenty. I got out twenty broke. 20 what year? I got out 20 years old. Oh, sorry, 20 years old. Yeah, okay, yeah. so you went 18, yeah. come out with your 20. Yeah, come on. And you're back to square one now. Broke. Broke. I'm like, yo, I need money. And I'm not trying to do drug deal again. That was long, because drug dealing is like a business. And I always say this to all the young kids, yeah. If you got the mind to drug deal, like, you don't have to drug deal. Do you know what I'm saying? That's a business in it itself. You've got to be business savvy. Mind in order to facilitate this 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 system that you're doing so instead of using that mind to do bad stuff actually use it in something productive so do you yeah, know what really. i'm saying because if you know look drug dealing you gotta pick up the drugs because it's numbers basically it's a numbers you're good with numbers <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You could, yeah, yeah, you're exactly so if reading truly why don't you just invest that mind frame into doing something positive and could be a young entrepreneur like you know what I'm saying invest into a business rather than creating something here that comes with such a fragile sis, uh, 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 um, structure where you know if one thing crumbles everything else crumbles because nowadays as well what people young people and older people are understanding is that you drug deal you get caught for drug dealing the house that your mom's left you when she's died the they're taking that. Mm. Even if you can prove my mum left me that, they're gonna take that. Yeah, if you've got if you've got a pocket, 
Yeah, pop and a you own that. Order. Exactly, you got, got a confiscation order that's placed on you. So look, they can just come out. This is this how corrupt this thing is. They can nick you for I don't know a hundred thousand pounds worth of drugs, and they can say even though we find it's a hundred thousand pound a pound worth of drugs, we estimate that you was making this monthly mm, yeah. for five years. Yeah, exactly. Right? Yeah. yeah. So you owe mm, 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 come up with some random number and say for you to get out of jail and you're already serving for the hundred grand that they caught you with under drugs to get out of jail you finish your sentence and after that sentence you gotta pay us this money. If you don't pay us this money we chuck another ten years on top of your sentence. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's for you to do that. Yeah that's, that's yeah. a new that's a new tactic. Yeah that's yeah. mad for you to do that. My brethren, you know, the encodes recently. Yeah. So this, the circle that I know, they estimated, estimated he done a thousand keys in seven months. And they sentenced him based upon, they didn't find a thousand so keys. Based on the estimation, yeah. Yeah. Just, he got just under 25 years really? on the that's estimation. <laughs> and now what they're saying, it's it's he's got to pay the contract. Oh, yeah, that's, he just got sentenced the other day and that's what's going to happen now. So that's a madness. I'll make you do this sentence yeah. and then they'll say, yo, They'll just chuck out a mad number and they'll say, yeah, you got to do this, otherwise you pay this. And not just that as well, um, anything that you've got given they to you, yeah. they take that. So, it's a so, robbery. So if you can't pay it, uh, you can't, they say that you ain't got it, you mm. physically ain't got it. They let you out, but anything you earn, it goes to them and they've but, got some thing, it's mad, you know? Yeah, yeah, no, you've you got to like, report to them. Yes, yeah, they come out. Yeah, it's a madness. So, 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 what was, so you didn't want to sell drugs? I didn't want to go, so I wanted to stick ups. <laughs> <laughs> like, Second option for us. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hundred percent. Um, but I had a, I had a, a crew with me. I had a, a, you know, I had another um, guy with me who was like-minded as well. He loved making money. Um, but we go after quick licks. We, we do certainty. Uh, we always have to have an insider, you know. And that's how, you know, I'm not trying to teach no one how to, you know, do criminal stuff. But at the end of the day, you know. The insider always has to be inside the premises, mm. do you know what I'm saying, to cover it. And more time is always down to friends not being happy with the split. So if you and me have got something going on and you're the main guy and I'm getting a 30 split, you're getting a 70 split, it's deep inside, the snake, yeah. exactly. All it takes is a text. Mm. And I'll always know guys like that. Yeah. All I need is a text, address, text, time. You have to be in there. We'll come in there, we'll cover it up. I'll punch you up a couple, I'll give you a couple punches, yeah, bust your lip, make it look good. We take the grub, we split it 50 50. Do you understand? I will never do you wrong as well because yeah. we need each other. This is a give and take relationship. Give and take relationship. Exactly. Exactly. Means that, right? Yeah, exactly. So instead of building a line full of nitties and junkies, we built a line, a network of, a people. Network of people. So we had, you know, we had uh, elbows. So if you want to snake your partner, hey, hit up call this line. Call this line available hey, 24 7. The game's scandalous. 24 7. The game is scandalous. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> rules, yeah, we've got a separate burner phone. The text comes through your address. We, we had Albanians, we had Vietnamese, we had even a white boys that was shot in and growing grub or money laundering and you know we had all breeds, all types. All you know is that look, it's a success rate, it's happening, this is what's happening and we'll go with every means and any means possible to make sure that we ensure success. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, you sh you got to be dead sure that that's in there. Do you know what I'm saying? Because a situation, you know, can go bad, bad yeah, you know what I'm saying? So you especially if it's all resistance, exactly. It's all a burner, exactly, exactly. Do you know what I'm saying? This, 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 you know what I'm saying? It's gonna be blood in that vicinity. Definitely. But um, you gotta be dead sure that the thing's there. Slip off into the bathroom. Quick text. We're there within 20 minutes. We're, for some reason, we've always been there within 45 minutes. No matter where you are, we're making it there. We had cars plotted up around the area. We had guns plotted up around the area. As soon as that text comes through. With, we're at your door and while I was in prison I saw this uh, method watching TV and like I said in prison you just bake off and you just think about taking your criminality to another level I see so there's a program called SWAT that used to come on where they'll this is in America they'll run up on your house and they'll get a sledgehammer and they'll, they'll have three vital points that they'll hit on the door and they'll guarantee the door flies okay. off do you know what I'm saying sledgehammer boof the door flies off in there Catch you with your pants down, you know what I'm saying? You're handing it over. Mm -hmm. And more time, we'll play dumb for a minute because we don't want to make it look like we know exactly mm -hmm. where the grab is. We'll rough you up and we'll say, search the place. Mm -hmm. We know where the thing is. Mm -hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? We're just covering the guy that's dropped the dime. Drop the Do you know what yeah. I'm saying? So, yeah, we, um, we covered a lot of um, 
we we covered a lot of areas. I covered a lot of mileage, man. Not areas too far. Not just stick ups. You know, we'll do. Listen, you got a problem with someone? Days, right? Yes, you got a problem with someone? Meeting, picture, Addy, with there, man. But I suppose that lifestyle is gonna come with beef. Um, to be honest with you, if I'm gonna be honest with you, um, you you think so? It, sh- it would, and rightfully so, it should. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you have your possessions taken and you're making money, it ain't a thing for you to just turn around and say. But these the type of guys that come through your place, like we can leave the area bloody. Like we're not we're not shy to do that. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, more time and just take the L, man. You know what I'm saying? Just take the L, keep moving. you know, and just cut off your connections, man. Because the thing is, if we hit you, we're gonna keep coming back and. Just, I believe I believe in the concept. If you do it once, it's not bullying. <laughs> do, you know <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. If if we hit you once and we hit you, it's not bullying. It's bullying if it's a repeat pattern and we're just waiting for you to re up and we're consistent. Yeah, it. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? It's just so yeah. Um, anything to get money, man. And no area is too far, man. You find us in Birmingham. You find us in South London. You find us. You find us in places you won't expect, man. You know, you make us sound like a legit business. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like, that's how, that's how like, we Uber. were programmed, bro. Like, the, the way we were programmed. Yeah. If you got a problem with someone, drop the there's money there. And just the thing is, if I'm not looking to take the job, me and my partners will sit down and say, "Yo, this job's popped up. Who wants it?" Mm. If I don't want to be travelling twenty miles down the road, do you know what I'm saying? To to, to put a hole in something, then I'll just pass it on to another. That's one. how Uber works, isn't it? Yeah. It's, <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Uber Eats special good. delivery. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? The only thing that we wouldn't do, though, you know what I'm saying, is go out of our way to just, like, hurt kids or, do you know what I'm saying, women, like, I would target this woman, do you know what I'm saying? These other criminals, basically. Hmm? It's the work's putting on other criminals, right? Now, other, other criminals and men, yeah. le- even legit businesses, mm. do you know what I'm saying? As long as the bounty's there, the, do you know what I'm saying? The, 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 not the bounty, but the, 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 the sums there, Papers, man, right. listen, man, we'll run through your shit and just, you know what I'm saying? And we'll come through politely as well. Hello, sir. At first. Smart. Yeah, hello, sir. You know what I'm saying? I, you know, we're here. We know it's here. And this is what's happening, you know? Um, obviously, you know, there's been times where situations turn mucky, but we'll get to that. So, so that was your earner now when you come out of prison? Yeah, yeah. No, we, and we hit that. Yeah, we hit that, man. Like, we... For how long were you doing that for? Uh... We listen, let me tell you something. If I'm gonna be honest with you, yeah, religiously every day, as soon as I woke up, I would have been like, it's like shaitan had woken up. As soon as my eyes are woken up, we had the dresses, yeah. And it's if we had your address, we're just working our way down, and we would stalk. You know, a man come like level five stalkers, mm. we'll watch you go work, we'll track your car. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Track of your shit. And the reason why I can say this stuff now yeah. is because, look, I know, I'm, I'm caught up in a big case and I know what feds have and what they had on me. Do you understand? I've seen what they have on me. So it's not like it's anything new. You know when people come up, oh my gosh, like this guy is so snitching. <laughs> Bro, I know what I'm talking about. The feds know. The only people that don't know is you lot. Do you yeah, know what yeah, I'm yeah. saying? So nothing's going to happen to me, you know, um, by disclosing the shit I was doing in the past and what the feds I had on me and stuff like that because I've served for these, for these things. You see, you see, um, does it ever go wrong on a move? Oh, like there's times it went wrong. Mm-hmm. So, okay, um, leading up to the, I, I don't I know, I didn't want to touch on it. Yeah, I just wanted to build my way up. But well, there's, well. um, so there's been times, you know, it's gone wrong. So, okay, I'll just, I'll just jump to it. So, leading up to the case, I ended up in a case where, um, I had a, a detective that was a, he he had a fascination with me and I found this out in court as well because he after hours he would take the you know like the tapes back home or whatever and he would just watch it over and over like so much so that his relationship had a breakdown because he was chasing this ghost in the, in the case so okay so it's yeah, personal to him. yeah personal and and they take it like that as well <clears throat> so I said um he there was a there was a shooting that happened in a robbery once right so i got a text right i've got a text um it's a look it's a, it's a local man that's messaged me saying yo my uncle's here seven to racks and despite the fact that we've been hitting you know and we've been hitting mps you know what i'm saying we've been abroad dressed up like feds 
proper operations like you know to dress up like feds tea mm. you know like taking lorries you know like big computer chips and mm. shit like that kidnapping security and all that type of stuff so i get a text of a little man right it's meant to be my brother's little cousin he's saying to me yo i'm here with my uncle 70 racks he snuck, snuck off into the toilet addy and i've always had family members those are the ones that would <laughs> Those are the ones that would no, I've never felt to surprise me. Do you know what I'm saying? Family, family members, yeah. close friends, uncles, yeah. cousins. It's going to be someone like that. Always. I, I prefer someone like that. I don't... Look, I don't like people that just... Oh, I heard... I heard something. I heard there's yeah. 300 in there. You get in there, it's 300 quid. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah, that, that happens. And, you know... The, 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 the guys that, that you're dealing with, because we do all types, we shoot, rob, whatever, do you know what I'm saying? you got to know the kind of guys you're getting on the job, and you got to be there when this thing's happening. And it's always bad that you're, not, you're there, because then, you know what I'm saying? You don't look suspicious. You don't look suspicious. But now, if I'm with you, and I was with you earlier on the day, and I got robbed, I want to be sitting there, my head, rubbing yeah. my chin, saying, right, I was in my <laughs> yeah, Exactly. Yeah, so, um, yeah, the dude slipped off into the bathroom, hit me up with a text. I was in a locality, not far from there actually, I was uh, in a neighbouring area and um, um, yeah, he's, uh, he's hit me up with a text, he said, um, yo, you know, my uncle's got 70 racks, I'm in the bathroom, Addy, here, come, now. So I was with some boys, I said to the boys, wow, there's 70 racks, like, you don't want that, should we get it? He said, oh, do you know what, alright, cool, we're not doing nothing. You know what I'm saying? We might as well. So I picked up two boys, took them there, um, got a car, got the gun, flew around there. <clears throat> we got to this yard. When we got to this yard, it's all dark. It's midnight as well. It's dark, like. And um, the lights are on. I'm yeah. thinking, rah! You know? Um, this, this is sweet. You know what I'm saying? At midnight, I ain't really trying to sledgehammer someone's door. Yeah, okay. Preferably, what I'd like to do quiet. is wait outside until the keys. You know what I'm saying? Someone comes in, someone's about to leave, mm -hmm. and I force myself in there. Rough them up, Stick yeah. it right in the ribs, right in there. <laughs> <laughs> if I have quiet, to. Yeah. Exactly. <clears throat> but I've, by luck, we've turned the door handle. It's open. It's opened. I've turned around and looked. That's I know sometimes you're thinking, right, is this a setup? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Like, this, like, this is too, too easy. Like, with this zero effort to get in. So, we know exactly, yeah, exactly where the stash is. Yeah. So, we've gone straight into this one, upstairs, into this one room. The, the room's locked. Yeah. The, the, the guy's not there. So, I'm thinking, rah, this kid's left. But the thing is, his uncle's turned around and said to him, yo, I've got a bad feeling about this. I'm not keeping my money here today. Out of nowhere, the uncle said this to the kid. Come, come with me. Because obviously he's carrying 70 grand in him. Okay. Right? I just need to come with me so I can move it. So now the kid not too suspicious. He didn't oh. reach in his phone and message me. Right? Which he should have. But he didn't want to get on the phone. In front of him, yeah. In front of him, all of a sudden the door flies. You know, I don't respond to the thing. And then the uncle turns around and goes, oh, so I'm going to my door. Do you know anything about yeah, that? Him, yeah. <laughs> exactly. So we're in the house. This door that's locked, it had like a little lock on it. So we're trying to force a way into the room. So we're thinking, well, maybe the uncle's left the keys in there and he's left the house vacant. Mm -hmm. So we're in the house by ourselves. We're assuming we're in the house by ourselves. So man's broke down the door. So when we broke down the door, I said to the guys, your rum sack is underneath the bed. So it was a water bed. The guy had a water bed. Yeah. So I checked, there's nothing there. I said, yo, what's going on? How come there's nothing here? So... I said, bro, I was already here. The law's broken. I'm going to go into the neighbouring room and search, search it. The house. So it's searching, searching. So it's sent one of the youths in the neighbouring room. He's rummaging, searching. One of the other youths still searching this room. I'm the guy with the gun. You know what I'm saying? I'm big. I'm 6'4". You know what I'm saying? I'm 17 and a half stone. Mm. At the time, I got a pumpy. You know what I'm saying? It's it's easy to, you know. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And also, as well, I'm trigger happy as well. So I'd, you know, I... You know, Let I'm, them find the keys. Exactly. Yeah. So now we're here, like next next door in the bathroom. There's rummaging happening next door. So one of the users said, "Yo, hey, there's noise coming from the bathroom." So we've gone into the bathroom, trying to force a way into the bathroom. There's a woman holding the door, screaming, "Ah!" Right. So we're thinking, "Bro, we're already in the house. We gotta apprehend her, right? Because we can't leave in the bathroom. We don't know if she got a phone." Oh, yeah. 
forced her way into the bathroom. She's fell back, naked, right? You know, fully exposed. But we're not here. I've got no interest in you. We're just making sure that as we're searching this yard, you're not doing that stupid, like, ringing feds or whatever. The whole time she's in the bathroom, her boyfriend, the yard man, has jumped out, right? He's jumped out, snapped back inside the house, no. right? Because they were renting this yard. And the man that was they were renting with, he had a room in the yard. Do you know, do you know what I'm saying? Okay. So he snapped back inside, rang the feds. So when he's rang the feds, yo, there's burglars in the house. He doesn't know that these burglars are armed. So, um, when he's rung the feds, we've took the woman into one of the rooms, we've got a hostage upstairs. He can and hear you don't her. know he's from the feds? No, we don't know there's anyone else. Oh my days. Right, she's actually, she don't speak French, but she's from Mauritius. Yeah. Right, so she's... She's playing dumb. Yeah, she's playing dumb. But eventually we got her to talk. She goes, I don't live here, I don't know anything. All right. I said to one of the boys, the boy said, there's nothing in the neighbouring room. I said, go downstairs, we're already here, bruv. We've got a naked woman right so here on her probably. knees. We've got guns, we're on premises, that's not us. Mm. Search the whole yard, because I don't want to leave the yard thinking, oh, you leave it the yard, you get there. through to the unit, and the youth was like, yo, I was in the kitchen in a bag. So as the, one of the youths has gone downstairs, he tried to open the door, the yard man jumped out on a vicious mom. Kitchen knife in hand, boom, my clock, you know what I'm saying? Swinging hands. The youth seen this, 10 towing, running, down the corridor, screaming my name, goes. But I've already seen the big yard man in his boxes, right, chasing after the youth. That's when I fired the gun. And it's gone through the shelf and it's burst the yard man in the neck. So the wadding, so how the shotgun works is it, it comes with a wadding, yeah, and this wadding may, will, so if you shoot through the table, the wadding will break the hole in the table in order for the pellets to fl fl okay. follow through. Sometimes if you're unlucky, the wadding will hit you. And the pellets will burst your skin or whatever. The wooden will burst, it's enough to burst you anyway. So alhamdulillah, it's gone through the shelf that they had in the corridor while he was running. I've just leaned over and just fired the gun and it burst his neck. And like I've said many times, like a cold can, when you shake a cold can when you're a kid and you stab it and it goes <laughs> The guy's neck just started spraying blood all over the yard. Oh the yard man just shot straight out of the house. The youth I was with looked at me red faced. I've looked at him. I said, yo, it's time to chip. The guy's sprayed so much blood in a matter of seconds, he shot straight out of the yard. So he had like wooden flooring. So as we run down the stairs, blood. Blood everywhere, on the walls, everywhere. I've even thought, yo, this is a murder. Do you know what I'm saying? This guy's dead. Right. Yeah, there's no way this guy survived. In my whole mind, for the whole. Until I got nicked, apart, probably about a month later, or yeah. six weeks later, the whole time I'm checking the news, I'm like, yo. This guy's a goner. He's not survived this. Do you know what I'm saying? So anyway, he's run out of the yard. <clears throat> Guess who he's bumped into? The feds that he'd rang about the burglary were heading to his yard on the main road. They've seen a big black man, dreadlocks, outside with a kitchen knife in hand, blood trickling down his chest. I said, yeah, forget the burglary. We've got to address this situation. This guy's bleeding from the throat. Yeah, yeah. I mean, down his chest. We don't know if this guy's the attacker or the one that's being attacked, but all we know is in public with a knife. So we jumped in the car. I remember on camera, they showed me the camera, which was me. They said, yeah, um, I, I've seen myself driving past. I run back inside. There was a camera. We parked outside some hidden camera. Got in the car, drove past the feds on High Street. As they were trying to talk down the guy, and the guy had blood dripping down his throat, yeah. And um, yeah, that's uh, that's the that's the that's the case that I ended up going in there for. But <clears throat> prior to that original case itself, yeah. what led to me going to prison the second time round? Um, I picked up a group of boys. I got a call. There's drugs in the house. This is after the move. This is this is this is before this oh, move. The so man's persistent, yeah. licking them. Do you know what I'm saying? We run pre air. Okay. Like we, we do, job, yeah. Businesses, yards. You got it. We're coming. Do you understand what I'm saying? And we don't just like dummies just run up in there. We would have been stalking you for a hot minute. Do you understand know what I'm saying? We know what pattern you take to get home. You know what I'm saying? We know what time you finish on what days. So <clears throat> this one was a scary one because I got a call. This guy was dating a girl. The girl's brothers had some drugs in the house. And um, he's rang me, he says, yo, tsh, my baby mum, <laughs> uh, her brother, um, 
it's got food in house. And funny enough, most of the, 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 the hits that I would get would always be workers mm. that are working for their yeah, boss, boss and the boss is mistreating them. Do you know what I'm saying? This is why I always believe in having a, a nice aura and being able to gravitate. Do you know what I'm saying? I never talk down to anyone. Even whether I'm getting it or the person's poor, I always treat people with respect. Mm. So when someone's got an issue and they know where those boys and you work on a line where your boss is picking up 10 bricks or 5 bricks or whatever and you're mistreating you bad because he's like pick up he's going to hit us with a text exactly and that's that's a common mistake you got to treat people with respect even though they're underneath you right but just don't let them feel as though they call them disgruntled workers isn't it that's the wrong place to be a disgruntled worker boy 100% 100% and you mistreat them (laughs) (laughs) no rights yeah exactly but even 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 them especially down to them Mm. they've studied you they've been working on your line for a minute Mm. they've been taking your abuse for a minute do you know what I'm saying yeah and and sometimes they get mispaid as well exactly they're looking around I'm moving 10 bricks for you and like you know and not just that as well sometimes the packages go you know what I'm saying though their workers lose grub and then the boss man comes in and goes, yeah, I'm taking out your paycheck. Yeah, that's like, true. Bro, that's yeah, not even exactly. my fault, though. Yeah, that's true, Do you know yeah. what I'm saying? So, that's yeah. where we, we come from. Okay, so, so, he, so he, he's giving the drop on her He's giving me the drop. So now, we don't, like, we've built up such a reputation within the, the area of being the guys that get it. We're, we're putting people on. Because one thing that I've always kept in mind is that people get jealous. You know, even as a robber. Like, bro, you never bring me. You know what I'm saying? Like at start, no one wants to get involved in doing the robberies themselves. But when they hear that, yo, that man licked off 170, that man licked off 200k, licked off a quarter mil. Yeah, name's ringing. Man. Yeah, yo, what about us? Yeah, yeah. So what you tend to do, what I tended to do, is to involve as many people as you can. You know what I'm saying? Especially the ones that cl- claim to be down. Mm-hmm. But it, the thing is with me, is that I'm kind of sadistic. I'll, I'll put them on something. I'll provide the car, I'll provide the move, I'll provide the gun. Like a, like a, like a pervert or some, some, you know them sickles that just sit in the dark and just watch. <laughs> I always be in the dark in the corner just watching what's happening. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? To see, because I like, I like. But I know, suppose that's based upon watching people like to get the movement. Yeah, ex- exactly. Yeah. So these boys that I picked up to go and do this yard, I've said so many times, these guys impressed me. I've never... So it was meant to be in the house? There's meant to be some drugs some of them yeah. in the yard. <clears throat> there was two red doors back to back. These youths that went to do the yard, they use sign language. The youth can talk. But sign language. Sign language, bro. You know, like, the closest thing that I've seen to that is like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. These they're guys, they're actually having a full-blown combo. But the thing is, I went to go and pick up these youths and they were tipsy on the block. Yeah. And something said to me, yo, don't take the youths. Do you know what I'm they're saying? High. Don't take these guys. They're high, bro. But I agreed. I took them. I was like, nah, man, it's a quick thing. I took them yeah, there. They've gone in the yard, but they went in the wrong yard. There was two red doors and I showed them your yard is what I drove them. I said, that one. <laughs> bro. <laughs> I said, that one, yeah? They go, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so obviously, obviously, I'm around the corner. I'm not going to be right outside the door like, no, not that yard, that yard. The others are not pointing at me yeah, being. Of course, yes. <laughs> The dudes of sledgehammer the door, right, run up in there. And the neighbouring house, there was a woman in there with some kids. Um... Anyway, shit's gone tits up, right? At least I ended up coming back. Cause I've, been, I've seen it happen. I've seen them go into the door. Even at the time, I was sure that they've done the, the right yard. Yeah. I said to them, when you do the yard, this is the meeting spot. Come there. So I've seen them hit the yard, go in there. I said, yeah, I'm going. Drove off, chipped. Yeah. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. They've come and met me at the uh, meeting spot. They said, Joe, there was nothing in there. I'm saying, no. Nah. Impossible. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I, more time, especially when I take two people with me, I always I chuck a third one in there who I can trust. Do you know what I'm saying? That is not with them. Do you know what I'm saying? That's how it has to work. You're not just going to pick up free random man and tell him to run up in there. They'll always come back and tell trust, you. They? Yeah, they'll come back and say, yeah, this wasn't there and that wasn't there. So anyway, um, they've hit the yard. Yeah. Um, they've, came, they've came back. Yeah. And... I find that I brought the guy, the guy saying, yo, my girl's saying her next door neighbor's house just got fucking drank, like, run up in. And her brothers are trying to move the food now, but the police are knocking on the door. 
The feds knocked on the, the neighboring door to try and get see. information, see if it's, they can smoke drugs, you know, because these boys are smoking weed, and feds have said, yeah, we're stepping in here. What's happening in here? Search the yard, dripped them. Do you know what I'm saying? So really, truly, indirectly, found the drugs, indirectly, yeah. exactly. The feds have took a stash and have nicked the guys. Do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> Out of incompetence now. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? But anyway, I got a bird call. As I'm talking to the boy, these boys, I got a call instantly. I had a Vietnamese guy that used to go by the name of Tony. His name wasn't Tony, but this guy mm-hmm. can barely speak English. But he, he didn't Tony. trust me to that level. And I, I didn't even want to know. Like, yeah. Dude, don't fool me. Your name is Tony. So I'll just take it for face value. He says, listen, I am in the house right now. I've dropped off 30K. Because how the Vietnamese work is the boss. The bosses are back in Vietnam. Yeah, I never understood that. Yeah, no, the bosses are back in Vietnam. Yeah, and they've got the cap holes here. The cap holes, they'll pump the money into the cap holes and the cap holes will find the yards and the workers, right? So, and they'll put the, the worker inside the house. You stay there. Do you know what I'm saying? The, the worker sleeps in there. He's got no papers. He sleeps in there. He tends to the grow. Yeah, the, the food. So, obviously, the feds kick off the door. They just got some Vietnamese guy. Nick came. He's got no name, nothing. Do you know what I'm saying? So, the boss is actually Vietnamese. Yeah, yeah, yeah Vietnamese. They're, they're back in Vietnam. They don't care. They'll just pump the money into the capo. The capo is directly in charge of making sure that everything runs smoothly, right? Um, they put the workers in all these addresses because the capos have to live here. They have to be able to have links into the state agents and stuff oh, like yeah. that. So, um, the um, this, this capo that I've got, he would, oh, he would have a boss who collects all the money from all the capos in the area and wires the money over into Vietnam to the main boss in order for the main boss to pump money into other places. So they've got like a set, a proper set system. So the couple says to me, yo, so I've done a couple of licks with this guy. <clears throat> he says, yo, I just dropped off 30 bags. Southeast London, yeah, I just dropped off 30 bags in this address. Come right now, they're counting there's 170 right now in my in front of me. There's a one Vietnamese woman and four sons. One of them's in a wheelchair, the rest of them are skinny. Listen, that's all I need to hear. He's in there right now. They're using money machine. I can you know you can hear the yeah. money machine downstairs. Like, yeah. I said, address. Instantly, with the guys that just um messed up the robbery, right? I said, yo, second come. chance. Come, we're going, right? Rang a bridge on mine. Yeah, I said, yo, I'm going to jump in your car. Cause then, uh, I was meant to jump in his car, actually, as a safety car. But instead, because these guys are so tipsy, I want to make sure that they get there. I'm not going to give them the will, after they've messed up the first move, to crush into a lump post. The this time. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And this time, I was actually going to go in with them. Do you know what I'm saying? Because you guys are drunk. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I can't afford you like, messing up. Or... So anyway, we're driving. Driving is what, what I used to do. Like I said, we used to have plated cars in the area. <clears throat> we'll go on like um, Ask Mid, yeah, to check for Ask Ask Mid. Which, which one is that one again? Is that the one with the plates? Because that, you know, uh, that's the insurance one, right? Sh- Ask Mid, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So we used to find stolen cars, and so it's been over ten years since then. Mm. So we used to find stolen cars and find cars that are for sale that clone the plates the same car basically. the same car yeah. we'll check the insurance if it's insured so it's insured AMPR. So, yeah, yeah AMPR so I'll fly straight to the uh, an area in Essex where I used to get bare plates made no questions the guy would just go I'll give him the list and go get the list give him the plates so we'll plate out the car so as I'm driving now the mistake that I made this time is I've got plates off a car from a car company yeah where it's insured it's not a car company it's a showroom the car's insured, but it's not registered to anyone. So I've won a bus, a mad Yui, right? In front of armed feds, right? I'm aware that they would drag that traffic lights. I might as well should have been drunk myself because the move that I just pulled is stupid as hell. I should have been more observant. So I busted the Yui because I'm, I'm not that. Uh, I just busted you to try and catch up with my friend. Next thing the feds have said, yo, and, and the city police as well, these lot move armed because they've got a police a two mile radius. Yeah, yeah, city yeah, police, these lot, red cars, X fives, guns, yeah, the tasers. Yeah. 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 Now, see, a car's just following me. I'm like, yo, what was? It? I'm leaving East Gate to South. Yeah, I'm thinking, rock, what's going on? Oh gosh, it's feds. They're, they're trying to ask me. They're, oh, we're gonna pull over. 
dude, I ain't pulling over, but I'm taking a chase. <laughs> but you see us, you see me, during during our time, we were on anything. You know, if we jump out and if we got shit in the car, we'll fist up a fed. Do you know what I'm saying? Before he takes us. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I'm saying? Oh, we're taking the reckless. Yeah, we're reckless, on yeah. madness. Do you know what I'm saying? So I said, yo, we're not pulling over. So boom. I remember getting guy into South London. The roads are zigzaggy, right? Because we take chases all day, right? Roads are zigzaggy. I remember crashing the car. <laughs> Crashed. Uh, London Bridge. The tourists there. Yeah, I don't know what tourists are doing at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock at night. Yeah, taking snaps. In the bridge, right? They heard a the car skid, they jumped out, chick, 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 taking pictures. <laughs> yeah. As they're taking pictures, you know me, as soon as I jump out, I said, Don't follow me! <laughs> that's the first thing that you hear. Uh, that's the first thing that you hear from me. Do not follow me, bro. Everyone's, Everyone's on though. their own thing right now. You have to, though. You have to. Because there's two friends and three of you, one man's gonna get away. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But before we got into the car, there's one guy who carries the bag with the mash in it. Right, the gun was broken. We had one of those guns that you can break down into pieces. Okay. Even if we took one piece from that bag, and the forensics take take the gun, we won't qualify as a full gun because there's pieces missing. Okay. You know so, car crashes. Don't follow me. Jump out of the car. Ten towing. I don't know where I'm going. Oh, I, see, I hear footsteps behind me. I see the, the same guys, the same brothers that I was with, that were tipsy. They're following me. And there's a fourth guy, he's he's cut off and done his own thing. Yeah, yeah the smart one, he's the one that got away. But the thing is, he left the gun in the car. He didn't take the gun, and it was, it was his responsibility to take the gun. So we got to the pier now. Right, cutting. Got to the pier. I turned around, I thought to these guys. I said, oh, yo, oh, bro, someone's gonna jump. Yeah, the Thames are underneath us, yeah. Dirty water, desperate, adrenaline, pumping. Nighttime, I said, yo, you man, jump, jump, jump. I'm trying to persuade them to jump. Jump. They're, they're looking at me like, yeah. They're like, you jump. So now we're arguing. We can hear the feds running, running down the wooden pier. I said, yo, you man, jump. They said, no, you jump. I've got one guy so close to jumping. I'm like, yeah, if he jumps and he survives, I'm, I'm going to jump. Right? I can't even swim. Yeah. Right, so I you can't swim. Yeah, I can't swim, but I'll take the risk because I've already been jailed for a gun. My first gun charge. Now it's looking like it's a probability. If this guy didn't take the gun, I'm, I'm gonna be yeah. I'm gonna be looking at my second position. IPP them times. Well. Yeah, yeah, they'll distribute you know. So this guy sat down at the pier, looking at me like this. I'm looking at him. I'm thinking, yeah, do it, do it. He goes, yeah. I said, do it, but he's hesitating. Right. The feds have just turned off. God of floor! I'm like, oh gosh, I've heard this rodeo again, man. I'm like, no, what have I done? You're like a clown. I, I, at precise moment of time, I'm thinking, yeah, my mind, my mind, something said to me, maybe if you get shot, you get a discount. Oh, <laughs> do you get a bird. <laughs> Over bird. Like, yeah, do you know what I'm saying? Like, he shot me. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? Get a discount. All types of shit. Yeah, all types of shit. Yeah, all types of shit. Go, go, passionate discount. Man, they've nicked us. Yeah, they put us in a van. I'm looking at these guys. Bruv, they've searched the car eventually because when they've nicked us, they've nicked us for burglary. So they've searched the car. Oh, so they've nicked you for the. No, 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 not yet. They haven't nicked us for the original burglary okay. yet. So they're saying, yo, you man broke into a yard. You've seen guys fit in your description, guy to get this car. Bro, we don't burgle cars, bro. Mm. We had links for cars. We've got guys from South London yeah. that do the burglaries. We never had the balls to do burglaries. We do armed robberies. I, I, I'm an armed robber. I put my hands up. I'll say, yo, I'll come for your shit. Everyone in a party is getting robbed. I don't care if there's 20, man. Mm-hmm. I've got something which can switch you off. off do you mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? And you're going to comply because you know why? Because I'll put a hole in your boy and you see how serious I am right mm-hmm. now. Do you understand? So, burglaries, I haven't got the boss to do it. I'm not sneaking around your yard. So, yeah. but, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I'm, exactly. Mm-hmm. Sneak around your house empty-handed. Yeah, I never understood that. Bump into a group of... Ten black guys or six black guys chilling in there smoking weed. Yeah, I don't understand. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, like, it's a, yeah, it's a man, it, yeah. So anyway, the nicked us for burglary. I'm thinking, bruv, I ain't done the burglary, bruv. You know what I'm saying? They said, yo, later on I'm in the police station. They said, yo, we found a gun. And they said, yo, we found a sledgehammer. And then they saying, yo, furthermore, there's three guys that run up in the yard in the east with a sledgehammer and a gun. Yeah. And they fit your you lost description. Cause the we had, door. Yeah, on the, for the red door. The other guy that got away, they're trying to say, I'm him. Oh, <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? They're saying, Joe, you're 
You the free. And you go hold them. I'm thinking, yo, what free? Yeah. Bro, bottom line is, yeah, I'm in Belmarsh. Right. Also, so, so you've got nicked and I've charged. Got nicked and charged. Yeah. Because oh, I've got previous for guns, innit? Yeah, so they didn't you, yeah. I'm in Belmarsh. That's when, as I'm in Belmarsh. That's when so it stopped. How old are you now? Um, 20, 20, 20, 20, I'm in Belmarsh, yeah? As I'm in Belmarsh, that's when, you know the shooting that I just described, where the man got, got burst Burst, in yeah, yeah. The feds have come sniffing around saying, yo, same MO, three um, black guys. Run up in the house. Run up, run up in the yard. I actually want black, so I used to take different colours, Asians, mixed race, whatever. Run up in the yard, yeah? Shot a man with a shotgun. What do we have here? Free man? Shotgun. Do you know what I'm saying? So I'm like, yo, what? They said, but at this time, they've called me up to reception in Belmarsh. I've gone there because I always want to find out. If Fed's got a sign on me, I want to find out what it is. Mm. So I've gone there, Plumstead Police Station. That's when they have described about the shooting. They've brought me back. You know, they've asked for me to sign some paperwork for ID parade. And I said, yeah, yeah, I'll sign some paperwork for ID parade. So you know what I'm saying? It's nothing. I'm thinking, yeah, it's nothing. I'll just, if anything, I'll send some friends around there with black pressure and the case will crumble. Cool. I'm in Belmarsh. I mean, after Belmarsh, I end up, they end up transferring me to another prison called Brixton. I bumped into a friend of mine. You know, I told you about this other friend of mine that we used to rub shoulders with. Like and like do robberies and shit like that. I'll come yeah. together and say, Wow, what have you got? This is what I've got. Okay. He's in there. I said, No. And obviously it's bad circumstances, yeah. but hey, we're here together. <laughs> do, you, do you know what I'm saying? Like friends reunited again. Yeah. But he's back in yeah, but he's back in on for free guns. He's in for free, like big fucking sorry, big machines. Yeah. I said, nah, this is looking mad. I'm on big charges. You're on big charges. Hey, man. Listen, let me tell you something. You know what they say? Misery loves company. <laughs> <laughs> Which is so true. As much as he's my friend and I've grown up I with heard him, that before, sir. Yes, misery. misery loves company. That's true, though. You know that? A hundred percent. Yeah, it's true. As much as he's my friend and I've got nothing but love for him, I'm in a shit situation right now. I could do this with my company. company yeah, exactly. Hey, man. And he's in a shit situation. He's sh- <laughs> we could be in it together, man. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So we're in a cell. Chilling. We end up padding up together. We're in the cell chilling, talking about good old days. My cell door opens. They said, yo, you know? You got a pass or You got bell. No, you got bell. You got bell. Because custody time limits run out. They meant to take me to court for to start trial, but the prosecution ain't ready, right? Custody time limits run out. So I said, yo, what? This is in court. We're giving you bell. You're on road. I'm thinking, yo, a couple of hours ago, I was in the cell with my brethren. Looking at some serious charges. Now I'm on road. I'm on there for two weeks. My bridge is hurt. Oh, you know, man, but didn't come back from court. He's got bell. And he's thinking, oh, gosh. Dad, what, what the hell? You know, like, you can hope for that type of luck to happen to you. Bro, I'm on road two weeks. When you're on road, you have to go and sign into the police station. Right? Two weeks, the feds are screwing. They're brewing. They're thinking, how is this guy making bell? We've got to get this guy back in there. So now I've gone to a police station to sign on, past the police station, yeah? As I've walked in there, the police station's empty. I'm like, yo, oh, they for you. what's going on? Why is the police station empty? I was looking to sign on, go about my business, smoke some weed, chill out, right? The police station's empty. I'm like, yo, because there's two doors. One of them you report crime, and one of them's for inmate, uh, like, like, like people that are on tag or signing on to come in and sign on. There's no one reporting crime. I'm thinking, bro, this is a high crime area, bro. How is there no one else around here? Anyway, that means nothing to me. Where do I sign on? They said, yeah, one minute, come into the neighboring door. So I've come into the door, they've locked me in there. I said, bro, what's going on? Where's the pen so I can sign and leave? Someone's popped up from underneath the desk. I said, hello, Mr. McGamsey. I said, what's going on? Where do I sign? He goes, no. You've got someone that needs to speak with you. Mm-hmm. Said, speak to me? Okay, well, speaking to me, all right, cool. I said, yeah, could you step through this door, please? I'm thinking, oh, like, what? <laughs> step through the door. So I've gone through the door, I've seen some woman I've never seen before. She said, oh, can you take a seat, Mr. Mianzi? I'm saying, oh, take a seat, all right, cool. Well, what, what, what are we talking about? Because I want to hear, I've been up to so much bad stuff, like, do you know what I'm saying? It could be anything. It could be, bro. Like, you, you know me, I'm one of them guys. You give me an excuse, 
to do bad things like you know especially the violence bro i'm demonstrating that right now anyway right now she's saying she wants to talk to me about saying okay fine what is it she's like no i can't tell you just yet i'm waiting for a colleague of mine to come okay this man walks through the door i recognize this man from the the, the, the shooting you know the shooting and the guy got shot in the throat because he came into the police uh to the uh high security yeah. prison to, to get me out to interview me so i'm looking at this guy I'm thinking oh i recognize you he sat there he's smiling at me like that the woman said uh, yeah, Mr. McKenzie, uh, I just wanted to ask you about the shooting incident that happened, you know, uh, in the area not too far from here. I said, oh, okay. She goes, yes, uh, there was a, a burglary, an attempted burglary, armed guys, uh, broke into a house and shot a man. Said, okay. Shot a man in the, in the chest, yeah, with the shotgun, with a shotgun. And the guy went flying out of his window. Yeah, the guy went flying because he was standing on a stool trying to prevent the robbers from coming into his house. So he's throwing yeah. pottery and stuff like that out of the, yeah. the the window. So when these so, so supposed robbers are broke into the house and finally got through the door, one of them got so pissed, supposedly, run up the stairs. Instead of it being a burglary, end up shooting the guy. Oh yeah, and the guy fell off this the, the stool that he was standing on, throwing stuff out of the thing, fell out the window. And his ribcage got burst open from the from the shotgun itself. Yeah. Blood's coming from his ears. Obviously, the burglars have run off, so it's no longer a burglary now. Yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? But that guy's pulled through. He survived. Apparently, the guy's blowing blood, blood bubbles out of his mouth. His blood's coming out of his ears, and his ribcage. You can see inside his ribcage. So apparently, it's a bad damage that his guy's got. So I'm like, okay. What's that going to do with me? And go, oh, yeah, not, not just that. I've, an another uh, shooting I'm investigating. I said, right. She goes, uh, yeah, uh, there was another attempted, right, burglary where these guys tried to defend uh, their... Oh, they're linking all the things now. Yeah, they're linking some... Uh, yeah, uh, some guys tried to break into a house where uh, uh, the occupants of the house tried to defend the house and one of them got shot in the back. Do you know anything about that, Mr. McGenzie? <laughs> no? <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? This guy's coming, sir. Mr. McGenzie, you recognize me. I'm like, yeah, I recognize you. He's like, yes, from the, the shooting that I'm investigating where the guy got shot in the throat. But, uh, not to worry, we don't have the facilities here to interview you. We're going to take you to a, oh. a police station that has the facilities. They took me to a Trident based police station in Forest Gate. <coughs> And uh, I walked into that station, and I came back out ten years later. I came out of prison ten yeah, years they, later. They linked all the things together. Basically. Yeah, but I beat. Uh, so so um, I went to court. I had over thirty court appearances in two years. Um, two of the cases crumbled. Well, one of the guys when he got shot in the back, trying to. I think the, apparently the guy tried to defend his yard and tried to put his back against the door. But little did you know that there was a shooter back there and shot through the door and shot him in the back and this other guy that got shot out of a window that case crumbled but <clears throat> one of the cases that stuck with me um, was the guy that got shot in the throat even though he flew out of the country for six seven months the feds were adjourning the court case I have to get back there so the but you see the case that i got um so i got 12 years in prison for the um Burglary that went IPP twelve years. No, no, straight. straight we just missed right? IPP by one week. Oh, you missed it by one. Week. They had abolished it a week before. So the burglary, right? The guys with the sign language, the one that they did, right? They call us into court. They say, uh, Mr. McGanzy, you know, stand up, the judge. The judge saying, um, they're saying that I run up in the yard. I'm six four, seventeen stone, right? I didn't run up in no yard. The tallest person is five six, so um, they stand me up. They say uh, they, they give me a guilty. I start spazzing out in court. Ah, the jailers come. I'm like guilty. I'm like, bro. I didn't even do the bloody thing, bro. Do you understand? If you're gonna convict me, but obviously this is what happens, isn't it? Yes. Yeah, you know way. what I'm saying? You get away with so much. Sometimes you end up getting caught for the things that you didn't. Do. But even though I didn't do it, I had a part in it. I take full responsibility for everything that's ever happened in my life. Obviously, religion's played a big part in it. I take full responsibility and I don't take back anything. That they I'm gave you a 12, basically. 12 years. So, they tell me, stand up. I stand up. 
Remember, my co-defendant is Christian. He came with a little New Testament Bible. As I'm standing up, I can hear him twisting. You know how people twist the newspaper? Mm. I can hear him twisting it. I can hear the uh, the, the leather. Yeah. 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 Someone's panting in there. Yeah. Right. Mr. McGann, you stand up 12 years in prison for da 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 da. You know, they gave me five years for possession of a firearm, 12 years for aggravated burglary. I'm thinking, 12 years for. But I thought burglary is a petty crime, bro. Oh, yeah. But aggravated burglary, yes, bro. That's, serious, bro. that's a big yeah, deal. And that's the first time I found out because it's got burglary in it. You think it's a joke, yeah, like, yeah, it's someone in the house, house isn't it? It's someone, someone in, in the there, house. Yeah. I know the English saying, you know, an Englishman's home is his castle, castle yeah. fam. So you run up in that place, waving guns around. Mm. Right, we're gonna give you something. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Don't forget these people pay mortgages, they pay for their homes, they got kids, all that type of shit. Bro, they gave me one year, three years, five years, ten years, and twelve years. Mm -hmm. so I'm trying to though. Yeah, concurrent. I'm Even trying though. to I'm trying to add up and say, okay, so which one am I doing? <laughs> so as I they said twelve years, I hear my cold e that's crunching the Bible go, Jesus <laughs> <laughs> I, I heard him say that. I always almost wanted to burst out into that laughter. I'm thinking, bruv, Jesus ain't gonna see you now, bro. <laughs> <laughs> still thought about that that day, innit? <laughs> it's too late to call upon him now, isn't it? Yeah, for real. Yeah? I, Jesus <laughs> They shouldn't even laugh, but it's funny. It's funny as hell. <laughs> <laughs> I've sat down, yeah. I'm thinking, bruv, it's your turn. You are apparently getting done as the guys. Bruv, they've got eight years. Yeah. Bro, oh. One got eight years, the other got eight years. Bro, I was fuming, bro. I was fuming. Bro, I did. I, I don't even know what the victims look like. And you're going to give me 12 years. Yeah. So I remember being in a van as we're heading back to prison. I'm sitting in there, screwing, yeah? This is before I got 20 years later. Two years down the line, I got 20 years mm. on top of the uh, 16 years on top of the 12. But the time that I'd done for the 12 days didn't count. So I had to mm. start again. So I'm in, a, I'm in a van. Going back where? Going back to the prison. Which one? No, I was going to... What prison was it? I, I was going to right. Thameside. Thameside. <clears throat> going back to Thameside. I've looked in a little glass panel. You know a little glass door? Mm. I see him in there looking at me like that. And he goes, You held that like a G though. <laughs> I'm looking at him like that. Like, bro, I ain't trying to hear that right now. <laughs> Do you understand what I'm saying? You hold it like a... Bro, you're getting out like four years before me, bro. Yeah, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? I ain't Because you got eight out of that, isn't it? Yeah, I got 12 years. Yeah, yeah, I got 12 years. You do six, you got eight, do four. No, yeah, you got eight, do four. But this is before... Uh, so I, okay, so two years into my 12-year sentence, they recalled me back. In. And I said, yeah, the feds have managed to grab the uh, the guy that's gone missing for six months, the one that got oh, shot in the throat. No. And they said, yeah. Because, uh, the, you know, we're trying to push for a trial because we know the people are missing. They've said, yo, we're worried these people are dead, Your Honor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this guy is serving 12 years. Yeah. Let this case drag out a little bit, please, for the safety of these people and justice. The judge let it drag out. They've clapped these people coming back from Mauritius. Yeah, and this woman come, came to give court give evidence in court um she was of asian descent she's speaking french because that's what they speak in mauritius it's quite nice by the french in court the whole time she's obviously the the, the yard man was her boyfriend <clears throat> she's making out as though she can't speak english i'm thinking don't play me bro you're speaking english to me in a, in a house mm -hmm. but i'm trying to say i wasn't in a house so how can i know she yeah, speaks yeah, english yeah, yeah. and not just that as well the the, the um, jury so dumb that this yard man who's speaking Patois, yeah, with a woman that speaks French, French. how are they communicating <laughs> from yard. day to day? Yeah. Well, I got 16 on top of that. They said, yeah, scrap the 16. Scrap yeah. the 12. Yeah, scrap the 12, you're doing the 16, man. And you, but you've done two already. You've yeah, done two, two already. Yeah. Right, I ain't going to lie to you. I went back in there smiling, went back down. Thing smiling, I got my looking at me. How long did you get? I'm like 16. Because mm. I was expecting a life sentence. Yeah. yeah, I got expecting a life sentence. Yeah. Um, yeah. That was my eighth yeah. gun offense. What was it for attempt or? That was my eighth. No, the lights were off. No, you can't no, do no, it for what, what was the child attempted? No, nah, position with intent to endanger oh, life. Like the lights were off. Look. Oh, okay, so they, they said he wasn't aiming at him. Like, mm. How can I be aiming at someone yeah, if yeah, the lights yeah. are off? Yeah. Do you understand? If it's pitch dark, now if I pull out a gun on you, Pitch black dark, you know, no, yeah, but if you see it right now, the lights are on. I yeah, can see you. Yeah, yeah. If I put out a gun on you and I shoot you and you mm. survive, 
That's attempted murder because my lights were off. Yeah, shoot, yeah. The lights were off. You yeah, can't prove so. any intent whatsoever. They gave me sixteen years, but obviously, like I said, it's another story. Like you know, my I had a foster mum that I'd grown up with, who's a who was a judge, crank or judge. When everything went pear shaped, I had no one to help me. I said to, I remember saying to my barrister, I said, yeah, I'll, go, I'll, go, I'll go someone." I said, "Judge." I recently found out she was a judge actually, mm. and I said, well, um because I didn't have a phone number, the feds take a number. I said, I got her address, could you write to her and tell her I'm appealing? Bro, let me tell you something. This, you see that the justice system, there ain't no justice in there, bro. Obviously, she come through for me, she pulled through for me, hence that's why I got 16 straight. I was expecting a, a, a discretionary life sentence. A discretionary life sentence is when you get like a 10 rec yeah, yeah, yeah. or a 15 rec, but it's not mandatory. Mandatory, more time you get that with murder, Mm. Or second time section eighteen, second time armed robbery, or second time rape, or whatever. That's like mandatory life sentence, two strikes and you're out. But um, I got I was expecting a, a discretionary, and at that time I was going back and forth from court. You know the mic, you can move it with you when you move it. Yeah. And it goes anywhere. At the time, yeah, mm. I was um, back and forth from court, and I wasn't allowed to mix with other inmates because you know, like, cause of all the fighting and stuff like that. Um, I remember I done five months in the block. Five months. This is after you got the 16. This is before I got the 16. Mm -hmm. So in my mind, I already programmed myself. I'm doing it. I'm a lifer. Mm -hmm. Yes, I'm doing life right now. Do you know what I'm saying? So all this time you were at the Thames side while all this was going on? Yeah, my child. Because I was back and forth from, from court. court. Yeah, yeah, the same yeah, court yeah, that ships yeah, back. It's still a remand, technically. It's still a remand. Yeah, remand. even though I've got 12 years that I was serving, I still had uh, ongoing other cases. Charges and stuff so like other that. prisons won't be able to take me because they're not going to be transferring me from the prisons to this court, which is near enough to me. So that's it. Then you got so basically that now you're completely sentenced now. Yeah, I'm completely sentenced. You, do you, obviously, they shipped you out of there, right? Yeah, they shipped me out of there. Oh, my life. B cat, A cat. Uh, the B cat me. Okay. They shipped me up north. So I've been everywhere, man. I've been sixteen places. Loudon Grange. Loudon Grange. Yeah, yeah. Loudon Grange. Awesome, man. Yeah. Yeah. Loudon Grange. I hated that gaff. You know, like, I'm so far from Private home. Journal. Yes, it's a good gaff, don't get twisted. But I'm so far from home, bro. I never got any visits while mm. I was there. Mm. Yeah, so, and, and for me, and I'm going to tell you this, as fun as this sounds, for those young people that are watching, yo, you know, when you're serving a long time and you go up, like, further out there, you know, you got forget about your friends. You know, you, your family will just about struggle to come up there and see you. Do you understand mm. what I'm saying? And then now you're faced with these four walls, yeah, and you've got to try and dig deep within mm -hmm. and try and Mentally. understand what your purpose is on this earth, bro. You're thinking, bro, like, am I going to spend my life in this room? Like, you know, growing up as a kid, I was, you know, I had so much ambition. Like, you know, I was meant to be a footballer. I was meant to be, you know, a doctor. I was meant to be someone productive. But now look at me, yo. Like, what the hell has happened? Like, you know, and this racks through your mind over and over. So it falls upon you to try and make some change. Do you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, you've got to find your calling. Now, prison is mental more than physical. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, at some point of your life, you've got to make a transition, man. Do you know what I'm saying? When you when you were, obviously, the last time you were a youth offender, now you're an adult. Adult, man. Was, was the mentality a bit different? Like, obviously, it's, less, it's kind of a bit more civilised in the adult jails. Yeah. Obviously, it's violence, no doubt. Yeah. But, like... You're a bit wiser now, isn't it? You're starting yeah. So, how was that period in the first few years? Was it like kind of more calm for you, or were you still getting caught up in beefs and drama? Nah, obviously, you come with like a, a young boy mentality, you know, like hot headed. You're still kind of young. But you come across some real savages. You know, like I thought I was about that life until I met some real savages. Mm -hmm. Like, literally, it's humbling. Mm -hmm. You know, like you'd be sat in a, in a presence of someone that would one thing twice about killing Something. everyone not just you <laughs> everyone in your in your gene pool do you know what i'm saying like their memo but they how they present themselves is so like you know like like men yeah, exactly do you like, know what i'm saying gentlemen the gentlemen but the thing is you got to give a man his respect do you know what i'm saying you know look, a lot one thing is how you present yourself is how people will take you. Exactly, yeah. Do you understand what I'm saying? So these men carry themselves seriously and with utmost respect exactly, that you got to give them that respect. But when it's goal time. But when it's goal time, it's switch off time. Do you understand? So that shit humbled me. Like, do you know what I'm saying? Being in the presence of these guys, I know the nicest, some of the nicest people I've encountered. You know, the, the most nicest person I've 
I had encountered at that time was in for genocide. War crimes. War crimes, bro. He was waiting to get extradited and, and going to the court. He had been tried in the court of Hague. I don't know what the hell he was doing in my prison. That man was responsible for burning down villages and throwing babies oh, in that burning wasn't homes. in um, Yugoslavia. Or that was, no, this was like in the, in the Congo. Oh, and was it not Charles Taylor, was it? Black guy. Charles Taylor did get done, but I don't know if he was. No, nah, no, nah, this guy was in a. He was waiting for extradition. extradition Very sure. polite man. You know, like he opens the door for you. Hello, sir. How are you doing? That's and you always think. But, yeah, but the thing is, you see, with these people, he will try and. He's got a guilty conscience out of his mind, you know, oh, like well, throwing babies in burning buildings, throwing pregnant women, killing pregnant women, killing young boys, killing all types. You know, like when you send your troops in a village and they just burn literally down just burn down and kill everything. You've got this conscience, this thing weighing down in your conscience that you try to find God and try to ha have this feeling drowned out of you. So what you find is that religion, the reason why religion is thriving in prisons is because you find People a lot stop. of, bro yeah, and you find a lot of broken souls in prison. Like, you find a lot of broken men in prison. Of course. You know, and to think about it as the life that you were living so hectic, you're not going to stop and reminisce on road. Mm -hmm. It's only when you land inside there that mm -hmm. you yeah, start thinking, like, okay, what's going on here? So was that the first time you were exposed to, like, not always exposed, but you start looking at Islam? Or was it no, um... I actually started looking at Islam through uh, the company that I was keeping. I had some young friends that I was keeping at the time. This is in Brixton, HP Brixton, that were Muslim. Um, they, even though they like, never used to pray and they would smoke and all that type of stuff, but it's the lingo itself that, 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 Aki and, yeah, Aki. and you know what, actually going back now, it's only recently I found out that my great great granddad was like a high ranking, you know, like one of the Muslim back in Uganda, like, do you know what I'm saying? But obviously, as it's watered down, and he's gave birth to kids, and kids are giving birth to so the kids are straight away from the dean. But I've got a picture of my granddad from like the eighteen hundreds, which I still have on my phone, and I show everyone proudly. You know, he was like a high-ranking Islamic, you oh. know, what I'm saying? So, um, like high. So yeah. what that well, that was what intrigued your interest first? Yeah, the obviously, go on, so yeah, the they were, they were, basically. yeah, they were, yeah, they were, that that bond. Yeah, yeah. And one day, uh, I remember I was I was in the room, and they take they, they took my TV from me, so I couldn't watch basically. TV. And I had Doctor Zakia Naik's book, um, Quran and mm. Science, compatible or incompatible. And I was always into science. I always wanted to know what's out there, and do you know what I'm saying? What happens when we die? When I read this book, I remember reading this book. I came sneaking back into my friend's uh, cell because I had lots of books, even though I never used to read them. I pulled this book out from like my jacket. I said, yo, have you got any more books like this? I remember they gave me the book. I put it back in my jacket, snapped back into my room and read. So I read about Islam for a year before I converted. Now, some people might say, Ra, why a year, bro? Because I used to love sinning. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. And I knew that the way that I was living has to change. Has to change. And uh, like I said, I'm not... I'm not I'm an in-between type of person, so I'm either with you all the way, or I'm not on it. No halfway. Point. There's no halfway point. So after a year, I was like, yeah, I'm ready. Do you understand? I took my shahada. I even learned how to pray before I even took my shahada and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Because I knew that what I was going into mm -hmm. was serious. And once I became Muslim, my whole structure, how I move is very military-like. And someone as chaotic as I am, I need regime. regime. Do you understand? Because if if I'm left to just on my own devices and just roam around and do what I gotta do, that's equals to my old life. That's so, what. We're so no one really like gave you dawah. No. See, like that's the thing. Like, this book. You see, this is a misconception about prison where people are forced to be no, no, Muslim. No, no. And man, but, you don't get twisted. You get certain people like yo, they're Muslim. Yeah, but don't get that's wrong. not like, the right way of giving dawah. There's, there's gonna be people that like, for different protection and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. there is gonna be people like that. But I mean, like. Enough man I saw, they took the time, they looked at it like you and they researched it. No one even really said nothing to them. They just saw brothers and they were interested, like, what's this thing here? You know, the Ramadan we eat together yeah, and, yeah, yeah. and stuff like that. Look, I mean, we can. So, so it was a year between you studying it and, cause you, and you knew how to pray when you reverted. Yes. See, that's unusual. You don't really find I a lot of people like that. Pray. I learned how to pray. So right, I'll, keep, I'll keep like, a, even though, you know, I had Muslim friends around me. I had Somalis, you know, I had Pakistani guys. Mm. And I'll come to them when no one's watching. During my free time, I said, yo, how do you pray, though? Mm. Do you understand? What do you say when you pray? Do you understand what I'm saying? And mm. all of that. So I learned 
how to speak Arabic through the English transliteration. Uh, trans- Yes, yeah. which sounds like Arabic, but it's written in English, English before yeah. I learn how to read and recite Arabic. Do you know what I mean? Mm. But Islam for me, let me tell you something. If you were to say to me, we'll give you back all the time you spent in prison, all the years um, to have your youth back, I would not rewrite my story anywhere that it's written. Because you might not find Islam. No, nah, no way, no way. Like, you have to you go through that, that to find it. What people don't understand is that having a relationship with God and having that kind of bond it's it's it, it's you can't put a price on that. Mm. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like I always say to my wife, and I say to um, I say to those people around me, I say, listen, the most important thing in this in this world is the relationship that you have with your Creator. Mm-hmm. Everything else is secondary. Second, Do you understand? Because yeah. at the end of the day, like I said, your wife will love you for as long as you provide a service. As long as you provide protection, as long as you can do your duties as a man. Do you understand what I'm saying? That's that's conditional. I mean, that's conditional love. Even mothers have conditional, unconditional love, but to an extent, there's only so far you so can do until she locks you off. Mm, of course. But with your creator now, as long as you check him regularly and you say, you know, I've messed up today, I've done this, you know, I've done that, you know, I'm sorry, you know, God loves that type of stuff. Do you know what I'm saying? That's what he's there for. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That's that's the real that's a real meaningful relationship that will last you from this in, in this world and in the world to come after. That connection can never be cut off. It can never be cut off. Only you, you could kind of be ignorant and just mm-hmm. cut it off. Yeah. What's it called? Um that year you were learning about Islam and, and you took the Shahada, did you notice your um, mentality changed and Do you know what? person? I tell you what, I had a strict uh, uh um African man from the Ivory Coast. Yeah. Yeah, we used to call uncle. He was Muslim. Yeah. I think he was in for four or something like that. Yeah. But every time I would swear or say something, because I remember I'm a street boy yeah. that's coming to Islam, I'll say something hot headed. Like he would say, Yo, Adam! Turn around and he would say, We don't talk like that. So I always had, like I said, like, Alhamdulillah, like I always had someone that would crack the whip on me. Do you know what I'm saying? And I needed that. You know, like coming from the environment that I came from, you couldn't speak to me nicely. Like, hey, you know, we don't talk like that. I don't listen to that. Do you know what I'm saying? I'm all about sternness. I'm a, I'm a stern person. Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so I, I would need that type of regime. Like, you know what I'm saying? And if I'm going to be honest with you, since I became Muslim, which was in 2011, I've never missed a single prayer. Alhamdulillah. I've never sat down one day. Obviously, you can miss a prayer through sleep. But I've never sat down one day and said, nah, not today, man. I've always been, you know what I'm saying, persistently. I'm a persistent human being, do you know what I'm saying? So, you know, if, if I'm going to check for you, I'm going to check for you regardless. That's the hadith about it, that. Allah, love, Allah yeah. loves the deed that you do, like, consistently. Yeah, even if it's small, mm. do you know what I'm saying? As long as it's repetitive, mm. do you know what I'm saying? That's consistency. I'm a, you know, if I'm with you. How many, how many prisons... Did you go to... 16. You were to 16 yeah, I got, prison? Yeah, I got shipped out of one prison because of a, a murder that happened in prison. I got caught up in some murder in prison, man. Um, and, you know, that that in it itself. Um, there was a conf- confrontation that happened in, a, in this gaff. Um, one one brother that was leaning on a lot of man in prison, um, I think him and his, one of his supposed friends had a falling out, apparently. You know, and there was a fight that happened. I split up this fight. Later on, they've got a hold of each other. They're messaging back and forth and something, something like that. And two weeks down the line, there's been an altercation that's happened between the, the, the 25 Stone brother and some next man. Do you know what I'm saying? And the stabbings took place. But in the process, you know, when the officers have come down, they are apparently witnessed that, you know, there was me, the brother that died, and supposedly murderer or caught up in a confrontation or something like that. And yeah, the brother died instantly, then and there, man. He got stabbed in the heart and he died. You what know, was that? This is encoding me. This is in a, this was in Sky News, man. The lockdown the prison, helicopter flew into the prison. They, they already had it in for me. Because whatever jail I went in, and whoever's watching this that's been there with me, that served time with me, they'll say, yeah, this guy's the truth. Do you know what I'm saying? One thing I don't do is exaggerate stories. I come on, 
you know, and I tell it how it is, how you see me on, on cameras, how you're going to see me in real life. And those that know me, they know that I don't change up. So if I tell a story, it is what it is, do you know what I'm saying? So this situation has happened so, such, in its way, it was a traumatizing situation that's happened because this brother that died, he died in front of 60 men. 60 people? 60 men. Oh, so he shanked him on every wall. One, one stab. One stab in a heart. The brother cut it. Dropped on his knees. Everyone fought because the man is big. Yeah, he's, he's run out of breath. Yeah, he's run out of breath for fighting. Nah. There's blood spilling inside his brother, yeah. And <clears throat> everyone split up. Even there's certain man that k- kill people, that catch killings that I was away with, that caught murders. And the thing is, these men don't know about the, 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 the beginning of death itself. Because it's easy to shoot someone and leave. No one shoots anyone and stays around and goes, oh, yeah, let me see what's happening. You commit the offence, you chip, mm. right? They'll come to me, they say, Joe, his eyes are pinging around. I said, yeah, that's death, straight away. Do you understand? When a man's eyes start pinging around in his head. They say the soul leaves from your eyes. Isn't exactly. It? That's the last thing, because your eyes follow the soul. Mm. But that's before all that, soul, sorry, your yeah. foot stiffens up. You know the stiffening of the body, your foot stiffens up and then, Man's all moving off stiff. They'll come back to me because we're start, we sat in a congregation of prayers. This was on Friday. Man, come to me because I've checked straight after the incident. The supposed person that's done it apparently he got gripped straight away. Imagine doing a apparently doing a stabbing and getting gripped instantly. You didn't even get a chance to clear the vicinity. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? But um, he beat the case. He beat the case. Um, you know. Um, He's home now. Uh, the brother that died, um, he didn't make it out of prison and he had eight weeks left. So this is another story for guys that want to go out there and go to prison, the young boys that want to think, bro, you go to prison, serving a little time, end up getting caught up in an altercation and you won't make it out, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? I know brothers caught birds in prison. Yeah, cool. For like stabbing yeah, yeah, and stuff like that. It, yeah. You won't make it out, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? This brother had eight weeks left. Mm. The supposed killer had four months left. Yeah, that could have went left. And yeah, let me tell you something. You know, um, for me, one of the most um, um, mad experiences for me is bumping into the dead guy's family relatives. Right. 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 On, on outside, no, in jail. Because yeah. the feds were persistently on me. Check. No, Mr. Gadzi, please. You know, what happened? Dude, that. I don't know what happened. Do you understand what I'm saying? By the time I've turned up, everything's the screws are there. I can't tell you. Yeah, but we got word that you know what happened, bro. I don't know what happened. Do you understand? Mm-hmm. But what they tried to do is make the family the person's family do a 360 and bump into me somewhere, and they've said something to the mum, and the mum looked at me. You know that pain that you, you get from a, 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 a grieving mother, and she looks into your soul, and you look at you look at. Break eye contact, that do you, do you know what I'm saying? <laughs> but when you go back and you sat there, those eyes are still glaring. She's not with you, but this, she's you know, like you're still in that experience yeah. itself. Mm-hmm. That was pretty mad, you know what I'm saying? But two weeks after that, that thingy, I got caught up in the shower. I think I told the story, it's hilarious. I got caught up in the shower, I'm in the shower, I've got my own part that I shower in now. When I'm moving to a jail, I like to section of certain things to myself. All of us have little things that we like to do that are, I've got a shower that I shower in. One day I'm in the shower, we're all showering our boxes. I'm on an induction wing, yeah? One guy comes one day, busts the corner. He chooses a shower next to me. Bro, there's other, so many other showers that are empty. Where are you gonna come to me, bro? And the shower that I've got is a dead end shower, in it? It's a sectioned off little pot. Dude's out in the shower, dick swinging in the shower, yeah? First off, dude, like, you can choose any of those other showers, fam. You won't come over here with Excalibur swinging, water's all hitting your shit, yeah, and you're flopping around like a wet fish out of water, bro. Shit's all hitting me, bruv. Do you understand? And this is aggravating me. Before I got a chance to say anything, someone's bust the corner. Yeah, one of his brethren has bust the corner, or supposedly his brethren. This guy, right, he's about, no lie, about 18 and a half stone, weighty. Yeah, but it's you know like when you got mental health and they give you medication yeah, and it yeah. bloats you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's got that type of look. <laughs> yeah, and on top of that as well, the dude's got black clothes on. In jail, dude, you can't get black clothes in jail. Has this dude got black clothes oh, with a woolly hat? Yeah, and gloves. You know, move, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. And he busts the corner. So I'm looking at this guy. I've never record. I've never seen this guy before. And he's got teardrops all the way down to his beard. 
I know like back in the day when you got tear drops, you know what that means, isn't it? Yeah. Like a man's killed something. Do you know How does this dude got about 13 tear drops to his face? So his buster corner is blocking the exit. And then the guy that's showering next to me goes to me, goes to him, bruv, killer! What the F are you doing here? Like, what are you following me? So I turned around, I looked at the guy, I said, bruv, this guy's name's Killer. <laughs> And he's got black clothes on <laughs> in the shower, bro. Well, he's showering with no, black clothes. No, he's come oh, to he's watch a shower. shower fam. Okay. Come right. So now I don't know what they do is. I'm thinking, bruv, I, I'm, I'm trying to rewrap my head. I'm thinking, bruv, I've never seen this guy before. I know I ain't done nothing. Hmm. Like, is this guy a relative of someone that I've done something to? And he's like, no. He says, I've had enough. This is killer talking. This shit ends today. I'm thinking, what? That's mental. So he spun around and said to the guy, he said to the guy, this shit ends today. He reached in his pants. This is two, two, two weeks after the murder. Pulled out a shank. Bro, I've seen that. Looked for my shower gel. <laughs> my, 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 my cloth and my towel. Yeah. Rubbed my shoe. I said, yep, excuse me. Chipped out the, the shower. I hear, ghost, help him! As I'm leaving the shower, yeah. Like I said, no, nah, loud. Ghost, like, help him. Nah, forget him. that. There's another man in your neighbouring show that's like, Bro. ghost, help him. Help him. <laughs> I said, nah, I ain't helping that man. No. Bro, I'm already caught up in a, in, a, in a madness, bro. Do you know what I'm saying? But yeah, anyway, no, like, yeah, nah, the guy, yeah, the guy got out of that situation. The, the naked guy got out of that situation. I think it offered him like drugs and that. Um, I got shipped out of the jail when a guy busted M, the murder. Ended up in another jail where I've beaten up so many men. As soon as I touched down the whole jaw, was like, yo, my man's here. What jaw was it? Uh, this was High Point. Oh. Yeah. I've, I've fixed a lot of man. So now they're moving me around. Bumping into... Enemies. I'm bumping into Bear Man. And all these guys I was fixing up at the time, they were all thin. Now they've gone gym and they fancy themselves. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? Um, so they end up shipping me out of that jaw. Because obviously, now they've... Now they've seen this situation. Yeah. Because the guys are like, yo, officer, call my man out. I've come out. They've made it bait. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, they let the they, they've laid it bait. So the screws are like, why are you so popular? Like, you know, we can't have you with the people. Because mostly what they'll do is, if you're a popular guy, they tend to not to keep you with people. Like, like you look, if you look influential, if you're mm. big or whatever, like, they'll be like, yeah, those would be his minions. But nah, but these officers are like, nah, sign it right here. We're not having you here. So they ship me to another part of the job. They kicked me out of that part of the job for bullying. Yeah, I wasn't bullying. The officer just didn't like me. Bring me to this. Bring me back to the original jail. They had to shut down the jail to bring me in, and then they shipped me up north. So I ended up in a jail called um, Berwyn. A week of being in Berwyn, me and my brethren, I went in over a black guy from South London, four London boys went up to Berwyn. We're in. We're hiding because all these dudes just bang us up. So anytime we get a chance to come out, we just scout around and just hide places and just chill somewhere. I'm in a uh, cleaning cupboard. With a bridge in our mind, some white guy comes walking into the cleaning cupboard. He's looking at us. I've never seen this guy before. He looked at him and said, Yo, what's up, man? Like, what? He's like, Help me. I said, What? Bro, he goes, Help me. He's opened the towel that he had around his neck like a scarf. He's got a gaping hole in his throat. Gaping. I'm talking gay. You know, like, he's got in a situation with someone in a cell. The guy's bust a mug, yeah, that he used to drink. And you see the, the handle of the mug? It had, like, a extra part on it. The guy's punched him in the throat with it, and he's opened his shit. So you can see inside the guy's throat. So when he's done that to him, he's kicked him out of the cell. The guy's wrapped up, and he's coming to the cupboard full of, you know, where there's two black guys in there asking for help, bruv. I said, nah, man. I said, bruv, nah, 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 nah. You got to get out of it. Yeah, yeah, I kicked bro. him out of the cupboard. Even though he survived, because they locked down the wing, because they wanted to know who's attacked him, and this was a serious attack, because I'm almost serious. certain this guy's going to die, because blood's just, mm. dark blood's just trickling down his shit. Um, he survived, and every time he used to bump into me, he'd give me those eyes, like, yeah, I've come to you for help. You know when you come to a man for help? You refused him. Yeah. As you refused him. Bro, I felt guilty as sin, bro, I'm telling you, That's man. Jail, though. Yeah. Say, yeah. You can't get him all there. Yeah, yeah, yeah no, not everything, yeah. man. Not every, certain things you got. But that situation, it's like he was sent to me to help him. Mm. But, bro, I've just been caught up in this. Um, that was long, bro. Because feds come to see me about four times. They seize my clothes. They seize everything that I own, just in case it's got... Blood in it. Oh, man. So that, so that was that's basically your story of Joe, just drama after drama. Bro, they saw me. We could be here all day. Yeah, 16, 16 prisons yeah. in 10 years. 16 prisons in 10 yeah, years. Yeah, that, that's, that's 
That's near enough 15,000 people up there. Some of these prisons hold 900. But I went to a jail that had 3,000, man. And we're talking about Geordies, Welsh, what, Manx, was Berwick. Oh, but was also called- Biggest jail in the UK. Okay. And we're talking about Riff Raff. You know, like, walking out all that. You know, that um, proper estate. Yeah, yeah, all over the UK. Oh, gosh. Like, Geordie. You know, like, these men from up north, like, they've got a... They don't like guys from down south. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, well, you're in jail, that's when you, it don't matter where you're from. Yeah, don't. I'll be real with you. It doesn't. It don't matter where you're from. You just meet a guy from country, bro. Mm. Like Wales. Yeah. And he would just splash you. Mm, mm. Like, no yeah, long time. You know, 100%. I feel like when you go to jail, that's when you realise that there's bad men all over the place. All over the place. You know, when you're like London centric, especially when you're younger, you just think that it's only the bits as well. 100%. When you go bro, like I've seen, I've up seen, north or in places like that. I've seen certain brand names get fixed up in jail. Bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100%. Like, you know, yeah, yeah. I've seen man get fixed. Do you mm. know what I'm saying? Like fixed, but you gotta respect it. Like, look, mm. badness happens everywhere, yeah, yeah, not yeah. just your area. Look, I was in Loudon Grange, and I remember hearing like a double homicide, like a double killing. Yes, in Sheffield, where they pulled up at the traffic lights, caught these two youths, and head top both of them. Mm. And I was like, rah, this stuff happens. Yeah. Even Nottingham itself is sticky at yeah. one point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know what I'm saying? Nottingham, it's already shot in the minute. Yeah. That's what they call yeah. it. Yeah. They had the second highest gun um, crime in the whole of yeah. England at yeah. one stage. Uh, uh, do you know what I'm saying? But because we're from London yeah. and we just fixated on London itself, yeah. bro, it pops up in yeah, Manchester. No, I, 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 a lot of them areas are worse. 100%. To be honest, like they go to the extreme of it. Where in London, you kind of know what. So do, you know it's go, but do you know why it's worse in those areas? Because the gov- you know, London, that's like, that's like the capital, capital mm. of England. Mm. Do you understand? Like, it's hard to do crime and get mm. away. Like, these areas, Birmingham and Manchester, mm. which are kind of known, but they're not as important. They're not as important, bro. Yeah. Mm. Do you they got to try to yeah, make it uphold that. Yeah, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, but, so let me ask you, so obviously you've done 10 years. Yeah. And so, like, where did you get to that point when you said, I want to change my life? Man? Uh, I threw this kid down the stairs, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I threw this kid down the stairs, yeah. And at the time that I threw him down the stairs head first, yeah, the, the, the governor of the prison was coming up the stairs, showing the prisoner, uh, showing uh, other suits how good the yeah. prison is. <clears throat> like, yes, uh, welcome to my prison. This is my establishment. <clears throat> A body just comes flying down the stairs as he's coming up the stairs. The governor. The governor himself. The kid landed on his head. I heard a loud clap. I, I was almost certain he broke his neck or fractured his head. Right? And straight away, the governor's looked up. He's seen me. That's, that's, that's all he saw was me standing on top of the stairs. I run up the stairs. I don't know where I was running, bro. And I went to hide in myself. And, <laughs> like he didn't see me. Like we didn't lock eyes. <laughs> Like, do you know what I'm saying? I'm in my soul hiding, hoping it doesn't come. Dude, he just saw me. He shouted out my surname. Because he know! The guy was halfway <laughs> diving down the stairs, bro. <laughs> do you know what I'm saying? So how, how did that play a part in changing? Like, they took me down the block, right? And I'm, as I'm in the block, obviously the governor come running up the stairs, come to my cell, open the door, they knew me. Start pacing up and down the cell saying, we can't have you here, you got to go. We don't even know if the kid's responding. You could be getting down for murder right now. So I'm thinking, oh, bro, oh, man. You know, like, everything that I touch, I just ruin stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> like, <laughs> you know them kids? Everything I touch oh, just, just falls apart. I'm just sat there like this. I've got no defence. I said, yeah, yeah, I, I'm sorry, man. I don't even know why I'm saying sorry to him, but... I should you be saying so to the kids. I can't it. deny it. I just kept quiet. I just said, yeah. yeah. I'm in the room. I remember they took me down the segregation. That's where they lock you in a, in a room. I could time out like a kid. I remember sitting in this room. I'm thinking, Probably. I was 23 at the time. Even though I still exercised my right to violence down the line, but my violence got less and less. I'm sat in this room. I'm thinking, bruv, I'm a big man, bruv. And I, I sat 23. That's how my ways of thinking was. Like, what am I doing in a room in a timeout? Because that's what it basically was, a timeout from everyone else. I'm like, brother, I can't keep doing this, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, and right now as well, I've just been sentenced to this, you know what I'm saying? Like, practically, I'm basically doing 20 years behind the door, and I'm still caught up in stupid dramas, bruv. And at that stage, I was like, bro, like, you know, like, I just need to slow down and change my life around, man. So in that, you know, like, especially because I was new to the dean and stuff like that as well, still had these ways that I was there. Um, 
eventually, I think it's when I got to the up north, like, you know what I'm saying, where I was away from, like, bare London yeah. boys and stuff like that. I honestly, just put my head down and, just, you know what I'm saying, took, took, took the dean very seriously. You took it serious from there? Yeah, I took it serious. Because um, uh, when we prayed the prayer now, mm -hmm. like, I was, that's what I asked you, where did you learn mm -hmm. in jail? Because a lot of people just take the shahada and not really do nothing after yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So just for the fact that you put your head down, yeah, and learn the Quran in prison. That's a big thing, man. Because you don't see a lot of men doing that. Yeah, yeah. You know, a lot of men be like, when I get out, that's when I learn it. And then you get out and you come straight out into this yeah. circus again. And you're yeah. gonna forget about it. Do you know when I was in there, I always uh, made a uh, 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 a dua or request to God that I don't let the dunya doesn't swallow me up. Mm. Do you understand? Because people become holy in prison, but as soon as you come back come out and you're in the mix. Mm. That's when your structure starts falling apart. Do you understand what I'm saying? Like you you forget how to pray, you know, you start linking up with your old friends, you're smoking again, you're rubbing again, you're doing all of this. So for me, the most important part is to uphold into the relationship that I valued and I value the most, which is regular checking. Mm -hmm. You know, any type of meaningful relationship that you have in your life, you have to check in with each other every day. Mm -hmm. Just like how you check in on your mum every day. Your mum, how are you? Your dad, how are you? You check in with your kids every day, right? Why is it that you go that extra mile to check in with your relatives, but the person that's gave you sight, that's gave you hearing, that's gave you speech, that's gave you understanding, yeah, the creator that's that's gave you existence, you put it on a back burner and you just concentrate on what you can see and not work on your spiritual existence. You know, I said to my son the other day, he's 14, isn't it? I said, oh, would you sell your eyesight for a billion? He's like, no. Oh, see, that was just my little, see, he was not saying about billion because it's prayer time, isn't it? Yeah. He was on his gaming thing. I mm -hmm. said, you're in to pray. Mm -hmm. I said, yeah, what would you say? He said, no. I said, yeah, well, go pray and thank you, Lord, then, you know? Mm -hmm. And whatever. That's how the people don't think like that, you know? Yeah, just, yeah. just a little thing like eyesight. Forget everything else we got in, mm -hmm. in our body and whatever. How did your um, parents take to you reverting and stuff like that? My stepmom, who's actually that was with at the time she's actually muslim okay. so when i embraced islam she was like good you can teach me some things do you know what i'm saying so i've made that um that's why i made it um you know i wanted to be productive mm -hmm. do you understand what i'm saying um and be an example for people to try and learn something from oh why have you changed how have you changed what's made you become like this and throughout your behaviours and how you carry yourself, that could be means of ways of spreading positivity and people might be inquisitive in 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 trying to learn what what, what has changed you. Do you know what I'm saying? Um I went from being a stoner at my house, I couldn't hold a conversation when I was like sixteen, you know. Um and now, you know, bro, if you were to ask me, based on everything that I've told you, what I do for a living, I'm a teacher, bro. I teach. Do you know what I'm saying? What do you do now? I teach. I teach in a university. <laughs> Didn't see that one. Well, what do you, <laughs> what do you teach? Nah, I teach. Um, so I teach in a sports academy. Yeah, Gosh, and yeah. I teach in a uni in South London. I teach. Um, person. I, I, I assess. Yes, yeah, like, like a sports science type of thing. I assess. I'm PT. The PT. Um, I assess oh, personal yeah. trainers. And I, 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 I'm assigned them off and I tutor them. So the, the personal trainers that people get in the gym, I'm the one that kind of like. Signs off and training, coaches yeah. the new mm -hmm. PTs to come through. I do online coaching as well, and I do some PT as well. You know, do you look back now and say Alhamdulillah? Alhamdulillah, of course. Alhamdulillah. It's deep, isn't it, when you look back? You, Alhamdulillah. Bro, the whole time I was in prison, I constantly used to think if I wake up tomorrow, it's a blessing. Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. If I make it through this 10, because 10 years is a long time, anything will happen within 10 years. Mm -hmm. Two years is a long time. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So imagine 10 consecutive years back to back. Like, I could, get, I could get a heart attack four years into your sentence. Five years into your sentence, you can go blind. Anything can happen. So for me, if I was to wake up the next day, I will have to pay homage. Do you understand? Um, but just for you to be able to get out that, that game. If I, if even if I was to make it out of the prison, like you know, that in it itself, the yeah. first thing you got to do is to Jude. As soon as you walk out of the prison gates, prostrate and just say, When wow. did you come out? I came out to, during lockdown. Oh, you came out since recent? Yeah, yeah, yeah. recent. Coronavirus. For three years you've been out? Yeah, like that. Yeah. Three years, alhamdulillah. And you slap from there, you said, no, nah, that's it, I'm done. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah deep, and man. for me, the testing time was coronavirus. Mm -hmm. You know, because I, I, I work in the gym, 
Like and the, at the time, I just lockdown. and it's lockdown. There's no work. Mm. You know what? That's when Shaitan comes creeping and goes, "Hey, man." <laughs> His gloves and that mask and too far. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So that's when you got to stay strong and just try yeah. and say, nah, man, you know what I'm saying? Because right. you know, man, way too much. There's only one way that life goes, man. Yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, whatever. So when you look back now, obviously, like, the journey's been crazy. Just like, this is just summarising, you know, mm-hmm. and whatever. And I always try to have a message in the podcast, you know, for the youngsters mm-hmm. or whatever. Because obviously we live in that time now where... I'm a bit older than you. Nice. My man as well is a bit older than you. So we come from an era with no like internet at all. Yeah. So we when we grew up, there was no mobile phones. We had mobile phones to sell drugs. Before that, there was no, you know, the internet's changed everything. So yeah. like, you, you don't have pages in that. Yeah, I had a page. That's the uh, first thing damn, that I had. That's when you yeah, know. You know, page. Page. I didn't even see you, you have a page. Yet? No, I never had a page. Yet. You had a like, page. Yet. Because like... 97 had a page. Yeah. Like, people, yeah. People, had, people had pages, but... You, see with pages, you said that to phone people. Yeah, but see what is someone would paid you and then you could go, go, go to the telephone box, box to phone yeah. them. But when I got my first phone, ninety seven, I had a page, then I got a phone in the ninety seven. But there's no point. No one, I had no one to phone me. Mm. Like, none of my friends have got a phone. It just didn't make sense because it wasn't like that. Because pay, pay as you go, I think if you look at it, it started in ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, yeah. That's when pay as you go started, and that's what made it a bit more. But when them phones came out, remember when Pay As You Go's came out? They were like two fifty. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah. I remember, yeah, expensive. That, 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 yeah, that was more like even like the the, the early two thousands. Yeah, so really, phones came for trapping, right, and whatever. So, and even like you see now, like so much programs, Top Boy, Snowfall, this. It wasn't like that back then. You get a movie like Come yeah. Out, Boys in the Hood, or yeah, back but, in the day and stuff like that. But it was all American, though. Yeah, it, it was all even really like, American. Yeah. But now it's kind of been. You know, what I've noticed a change. It's been glamorized. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like that's this thing, that this thing, yeah. that this thing is cool. Mm. But when you've really lived that life, and you look back now as a grown man, I look back anyway. But sometimes, like, alhamdulillah, when man got out of that, yeah, it's deep, you know. Like, you know, there's a hadith from the Prophet. I'm sure you know it. It's important hadith. He said, when the servant sins, he gets a black dot on his heart. A black dot. It's like a metaphor, I believe. Yeah. If he repents for the sin, God will wipe that black dot. Yeah. But if he keeps on sinning, obviously the heart will become become black. So now think of it either if you're a drug robber or a drug dealer. You are sinning from morning to night. And there's no repentance mm. because you think what you're doing is cool. You know, there. So imagine doing that for 10, 15 years. Mm. So, and this is not to try to put no one down. I'll be around brothers that are still in the game. Yeah, 100%. And I can't even be around them, bro. Mm-hmm. I'm like, bro, you don't realise how crazy you are. Mm-hmm. And was there, you don't realise how deep you're in this thing. Yeah, when you're there, in it, you're in it. That's, that's what bro, you know, it's constant, it? yeah. just madness. And it's like, bro, how did you live like this? And it's like, obviously, I used to live like that. Mm-hmm. But it's now, and, you know, bird, like Job, just becomes like part of the occupational hazard. yeah, yeah. yeah. Sitting in that yeah. nasty cell for years and years and years, right? and you you crap yeah. where you sleep. Yeah, you crap where you sleep, and it, you yeah. become. Do you know how bad it is? Yeah, like, it's, it's worse when you're the two men. Two <laughs> <strong. Come laughs> the next man's crap as well. I like, tell you what, it's... you know Brixton. So not to share the topic. Brixton, the toilet is where in the middle, so, yeah, but, yeah. right next to the bed. Yeah. The bed, yeah, yeah. That's do you, you, do you know how bad that is? You're basically living in your toilet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? You you get brought down as a human so much you start to accept madness. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah, this is this is normal. Yeah, it's yeah, there, yeah, exactly. and it's only yeah, humble for me personally. With Islam, yeah, like yeah, nothing. You know, like I believed. You know that saying, "Is the juice worth the squeeze?" Yeah, yeah, yeah. I believed it was. Yeah. It was only when That's Islam though, came, yeah. I realized this is horrendous. This is mm. madness. What I'm doing, you know, yeah. and all for money, mm. like just to believe, like you know. The paper chase is yeah. worth it and whatever. And you know what really surprises me now what I see enough kids whose families are kinda of alright, mm. who've got kind of money. Mm. Like I know I know I know youths out there whose family's got like restaurants and stuff like that. But they want to be trappers. Mm. I'm like, bro, do you know how mad that seems to me? Mm. So I'm gonna be like looking back now, we never had much when we grew up mm. and it was like ten of us in one one household. You understand what I mean? Of similar situation, you probably never had much. 
But I know you who's, who's, who, who, who... There wasn't 10 of us, though. <laughs> it was 10 of us. It was 10 of us. It was 5. It was 10 of us in the three bedroom. You know how Asian people get down. <laughs> so, like, my, my father was a factory worker. Yeah. You know, working in a bread factory or whatever. And he's the only one that worked in the house. But I know you, you know, whose families own restaurants mm. and takeaways and stuff like that. Own five, ten houses. And they want to be trappers. Mm. But I'm like... And I always say this, you know. I said, when you want to be a trapper, there's brares like my man. Mm-hmm. And they're coming sooner or later, you know. Yeah. Yeah. They're coming at some point, That's you know, it's there. Yeah. And you've got to understand that. So when that time comes, don't feel sorry for yourself because mm-hmm. you're not selling cupcakes. No, you're in this. You're in this, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've, got to, you've got to take it with the game. That's what's going to come to it. Yeah, 100%. The, the chains, the money. Money, that, yeah. As well. That's what's coming as well. Yeah, do, you know, do you know, like... I, I know brers that are on road who shouldn't be on road. So obviously because they know there's brers like that on road, mm. their whole life is PTSD. Because mm. you know why? It's hiding. Mm. They're constantly yeah, shook. Was, you know, yeah, they yeah. see that for us back in the day, we're on the block, innit? You've yeah. got your stuff on you, whatever you need to protect mm. yourself or whatever. Bro, that whole lifestyle, what you think you can live in that situation. And number one, Allah, God, well you think you can live like that and there's Allah's not gonna Allah's gonna let you be happy. Mm. You know, you can sell drugs and do madness and Allah's going to give you peace. You know, it's there. There's no work like that, bro. You know, it's mm-hmm. there. In the Quran, it says, like, what come, basically what comes back to you, we, as Muslims, we don't believe in karma. Mm-hmm. But we, in the Quran, it talks about from what your hands put forth. Whatever your hands have earned, whatever um, you earn calamity what? hits you is for what your hands have earned. Mm-hmm. So, do you understand what I mean? So, you, mm-hmm. you're you doing this to yourself. Mm-hmm. Do you understand what I mean? And that's one part of it, and the other part of it is PTSD. Mm. Bro, do you know, obviously because I read and I study, I know so many men that got PTSD and they don't even know they got PTSD. Mm. You know, it's there. But I know certain men are constantly like this. Yeah, like, it, constantly. It, it, but, and the, but that's PTSD though, because mm. you, either... You, but that's the thing, it never quite leaves you. you know, never, because nah, because like, even like, you might not be like that, but you know when you go to a restaurant, you still... Bro, I never, the, I never, the places and you still only sit in I never sit on the door. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. No, 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 no. yeah I don't even like people running, jogging behind me. <laughs> yeah, even I don't like no sit in my back, my, my yeah. class seat behind me. Yeah. You see, um, Steve, we were talking about, uh, this is going to be my final message here, inshallah. Yeah? We are talking about, um, you know, like, all for the love of money, mm. you know, and what we'll do for the love of money. Yeah? You said, have I got something for the youth? This is a little story that I'm going to tell you. You see, the world, this world doesn't love no one. Do you know what I'm saying? How many people have lived on this earth and tried to conquer it? It loves absolutely no one. Your love for this world can only corrupt you and lead you to your downfall. I'm going to give you a little story that's kind of off topic here, yeah, but it's very staining and something that people can learn from here. Yeah? Um, this is called, have you ever heard of a story called Isa and the Three Loaves of Bread? No. So this is a, one of the stories that I came across that was very powerful. Yeah? It's called Isa, Jesus, and the Three Loaves of Bread. Yeah. One day, Jesus, yeah, and his disciples, yeah, they were hungry, right? So when they were hungry, because he had 12 disciples, yeah, they said to, they they conjured up some money. They said, right, let's get some money together, right, and send someone to the marketplace to get some, some bread, right? So when they got some money together, they sent one disciple to the marketplace to get bread, when the disciple got to the marketplace, right, because they had no idea how much how much bread they'll get from with this money, the disciple got three loaves of bread, and he thought to himself, "Yo, there's about twelve of us up there. If I eat this third loaf, yeah, no one's going to know, right? Just to quench my hunger, right?" He ate the third loaf, went back and met Jesus and the and the group, Isa and the, and, and, and the group. So Isa looked at him straight away, Jesus looked at him, and he said to him, he says, uh, there's two loaves here, he says, uh, where's the third loaf? The disciples looked at him, he said, what, third loaf? He says, what are you talking about, what, third loaf? Jesus didn't accuse him of anything, they kept quiet. They proceeded on a journey. When they've got to a forest, they've hunted a deer, right, because they felt hungry. When they've hunted the dead, they've cooked it, they've ate it. Jesus has prayed to, to, to God. Yeah, he says pray to God. And the, with the power of God, the skeleton that was left behind from eating the deer sprang together. Yeah, and the, the bones was were, were clothed by the flesh. The deer sprang up to life and shot off. 
Jesus, oh, obviously the disciples seeing this, Jesus called the disciple that he sent to the marketplace to decide. He says, um, by the one who gave power to that deer, who, who ate the third loaf? The disciples looked at him and goes, oh my gosh, he's onto this thing again. He goes, there was no third loaf. There was only two. Jesus didn't accuse him of anything. He says, fine. They proceeded on a journey. They went, they got to a town that was flooded. They needed to get over to the other side of the town. Jesus prayed to God. God get, granted them power to walk on water. So they walked on water. When they got to the other side, Jesus called the disciple again. He goes, by the one who gave us power to walk on water. Who ate the third loaf? The disciple's like, oh gosh, this guy's still on this. He says, there was no third loaf. There was only two. Right, I'm telling you. Jesus didn't accuse him of anything. They proceeded on a journey forward. They've got to a sandy place. When they got to a sandy place, Jesus called the disciple to the side. And they got a heap of sand. He divided it into three, three bits. He said, he prayed to God, the three portions of sand turned to gold. Jesus said, this third of the gold is mine. He says, that third of the gold is yours. And he said, that remaining third is for the person who ate the third loaf. The disciple looked at him and he goes, yeah, I ate the third loaf. So Jesus said to him, I says, okay, fine. He says, take that third, keep your third and also take my third. He said, but you can no longer accompany us on this journey. The disciple said, fine, I got gold, I'm nice. Picked up the gold, went to his house. When he's got to his house, he's put the gold on the table. Admiring it, it was in three portions. So as he's staring at the gold, loving it, yeah, because men love gold, we all love attracted to gold. Three robbers come walking past his house. They look at the window. What do they see? They see gold. They say, yo, this guy's got gold. Let's enter the house and kill him. They rush into the house. They kill the occupant of the house, which was the ex-disciple of Jesus. They take the loaf, of, uh, they take the gold. When they take the gold, it's already perfectly split up for them. They say, yo, we're hungry. One of us needs to go to the market right, and get some food. One of them volunteers and goes to the marketplace to get the food. As he's walking to the marketplace, the devil comes and he goes, yo, he goes, yo, listen, why don't you get the food and poison the food? So when you take the food back, we well eat the food, yeah? To die, you take all the gold for yourself. The robber's scratching his chin, he goes, yeah, that's a good idea. That's what I'm going to do. The devil appears to the other two. He goes, yo, he goes, it's your mama that's coming back. When he comes back, why don't you uh, kill him and take his gold if you don't deserve it? Hence, that's why he's going to shop. You're not sending him to the shop. The robbers are like, yeah, in the house. They're like, yeah, when mama comes back, we're going to kill him and take his gold. When the man comes back from the shop, the robber comes back from the shop, the two robbers jump him and they kill him instantly. So now there's two corpses laying in the house. So, when they killed him to take his gold, they took his gold and they ate the food that the other robber came back with. When they ate the food that the other robber came back with, they all died. Right? Esau and his disciples, Jesus and his disciples, done a 360, they end up coming back road, to a road that led them past the house. Jesus looked, looked at the window, looked through the window as he was walking past. He called his disciples and he said, look, he says, you see, in pursuit of the love of this world where it leads you, point at the three corpses, the, old, the thing that they had in common was in pursuit of the gold. And what remained, the gold remained while they were dead. Oh. But it's the reasoning behind how they all went out. That's deep. Yeah. That shows you, isn't it? They all have worked for that gold. Mm. They worked themselves, really. They worked themselves mm. in yeah, pursuit the of the greed of the gold. Mm. So that's love, having a deep, profound love for this world. The world doesn't love you back. Because at the end of the day, the world remains what you move on. That's true, man. Yeah. And like I said, man, you're going to meet your Lord one day. One day. One day. One day. And then the scary thing is, you don't know when that is. Yeah. So yeah. enough man be like, yeah, when I'm older. I yeah, I'll do this. 
I'll do this tomorrow. I'll do that tomorrow. Yeah, nothing's guaranteed. Yeah, no, it's like when I say the guy that said that, the, the, the yeah. young thing, yeah. he, he found that um, three months, that like, literally he got like, diagnosed that like, with cancer. And even then, he thought he was going to get longer. I didn't think he's going to be there for three months. Three months Things yeah. accelerated like that. Before, you know, he couldn't even you walk. Know that. You yeah. never know, man. You understand what I mean? So, go try to live clean. Clean hearted. He's clean hearted. Just like, look, this, from when I, was a, when I was on road to what I've come out to now, it's got tenfold worse. You know what I'm saying? People are materialistic as hell. Much worse, worse now. Especially with social media, Instagram social. And that. People are living lives that they can't even afford. People oh, yeah. are getting broke trying to look rich. Oh, no. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? And they're, they're misleading robbers <laughs> that are running up on them to rob their shit. They don't even have anything. Oh, no. <laughs> and then they're the police. You've got friends who's kind of mums live in the hood. Yeah. And they're like pushing like finance, which is like man, it's like bro, priorities all mixed up now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's all for the gram. Mm. It's all for the gram, man. And you know the bad thing is, you see the real rich people, and there's one road I, go, I drive down sometimes. Every house is like multi millionaires. Do you know what cars you see outside? It's like Teslas, normal cars, like Teslas and stuff like that, because they really got money. Mm. So they're not really preoccupied. Trying to show the stars. I mean, yeah, yeah. the majority of white people don't. The ones who got money, they don't floss like we do, you know. Well, that's a poor person. That, that, that's the other. Yeah. For some reason, I know it's with Asian and black people. I think well, well like, that, it's kind of they go oh, a lot of their wealth is like because it's generational wealth. Isn't it? it's generational wealth. So it's the way they really approach a big it deal to is almost like totally different. Look at Simon Cow, dude mm. wears the same white pants. I mean, white top and black pants. Mm. Like you think that's all he has is in, in his mm. wardrobe. You never really see them with name brand mm. clothing. You don't mm. see Mark Zuckerberg, exactly. the creator of Facebook, mm. with name brand because. But you see what is you know? they take pride in the house. Of course, you go yeah, see the house. Is, the house. Is, I was mm. watching this thing about Bill Gates. He mm. got some idiot. He must, I think he drives a thingy, isn't it? What's that car called? A Prius. I think he drives it. Mm. And you see his house. Google mm. it. Some but then, like with them as well, because that's what happens with their peers, though. Mm. So it's easy for them to to to, to do that basically. Mm. Because when you think about the environments that we grew up in, we look yeah. everybody around us is looking a certain way certain and kind way, of yeah. in, you know like it's human nature to want to fit in, to want to feel like you belong to a certain group yeah. and things like that. Like for them, for Zuckerberg, for example, he was at Harvard. Mm. Like his journey is totally different. Yeah, totally different. He, he's never valued material things. So yeah, yeah. It's like, like you, for us, you, we grew like up you, like you said one up to time. It. You said it was like it's like we have it's like a birthday every day. Yeah. So you got like. Like, cele- like kind of like celebrate you got something so that's mm. why you kind of got overboard in it yeah so it's kind of like that still man but anything you want to add anything else ah no nah, um hopefully that story that you're giving is a you know it's a it's a lesson to be learned in that you know now you know just sitting there listening like just you know bring back it brings back memories of just that hectic lifestyle yeah 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 and whatever you you think to yourself why would anyone want to live that mm. life man but it's been a brilliant podcast man I, I enjoyed it myself mm. you know um but Jazakallah for coming, man. I really appreciate it, inshallah. Guys, thank you for watching, and we'll be back soon. Peace.